What's going on, team? That was an action-packed pre-market prep, and I don't expect live trading to disappoint, so you're at the right place. Look down, hit that like, and let's get it started. I'm ready. Boy hungry, chicken dinners, just waiting for me. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. Oh, it's Vegas lore, that phrase. What's going on, team? How we doing out there? Yes, it's the Goonies. We got you. Let's go. Rotten in the house from the headquarters. We're ready to get into this market. It looks great. And yes, Ryan, all, all, all fancied up there in the headquarters. Fancied up. Yeah, I see you. Nice little polo action. Looking good there. I mean, dude, look, if you leave your house, you should have a collar on as a man. You know how it is, right, Ryan? I think think that's one of the things that I think you and I definitely do. Like, yeah, we work from home a lot of the times, but when we go out, we we try to be adults about it, right? Got to have a (laughs) collar on. Right, we try to look good when we go out. We don't go out often, so we might as well look great when we're out there, man. Let's get to the action. Let's talk about what's going on. Shout out to James. Shout out to James in the chat who was out uh, having some food and adult beverages with us last night, and he's here. That's what that's that's what Benzinga likes to do, baby. We don't we don't shy from the nights, but we don't shy from the mornings after that. (laughs) Wisdom, wisdom thinks I'm getting fired today. That's so hilarious. <laughs> That's so <laughs> hilarious. Good morning, uh, P- Wisdom. <laughs> PCE prices coming in, definitely shaking things up this morning. Uh, year over year outlook for PCE uh, was expected at 5.1. We got 5.0 as the actual reading. Prior was 5.4. So to me, that was a nice cut down, right, from the prior reading, right? Sometimes I also, I know that a lot of people look at the estimate, but for me, a lot of my reading outlook also comes from the prior reading, right? Because what I want to see is a trend, right? A lot of people look at these on a, let's say on a graph and on the graph, I think what matters more to me is a trend down move, right? Trend down move, right? Where we see that down cut, right? And in this case, it's actually a pretty decent cut through. It's a 0.4% on a year over year reading, that's actually pretty decent. 5.1 was the estimate. We only went down 0.1 there. Core PCE also coming in at 4.6 versus 4.7. The reason why I thought this one was important was that the prior was also 4.7. So the expected wasn't for not to move a single digit, right? Like even a 0.1. And it actually did move a 0.1. So more surprise for me. It's not a big surprise, but it's still a better beat, right? Than getting, let's say, a 4.8 reading that would cause mixed signals. In my eyes, what does this do? This makes the Fed outlook for interest rate hike rates moving forward lower, at least in my perspective. Of course, we can take a look at the CME Fed Watch tool. I was watching that before it got the PCE numbers. On the next meeting, it had a 57.8% chance a 25 basis point hike. Now, after the fact, it's down towards 53.2. Just staying at the current is at 46.8. Let's see if that over throughout the day in the market day turns higher than 50%. That's what I'm going to be looking for as a signal that the Fed could be done raising interest rates. And it doesn't mean that they're going to pivot. I'm not saying that by any means, but just the no interest rate hike rate I think could change the outlook in the markets, especially if we don't have more bank uncertainty. Well, let's get to the action. Let's take a look at different stocks really quickly. SPY overall up there towards 405.15. We're going to look to see if we break towards this trend line and really kind of take off. It really already kind of uh, kind of hit there already. So now we're going to look to see if we can get some pullbacks into that area. And do we get a pullback into 400 or do we just take off the 410? Of course, um, you guys can be looking to see what happens there. Uh, it looks like I have like an anchored VWAP. Anchored VWAP has us going back here towards around 407. So if you guys want to look at that, let's see if we reclaim that. Get above towards 410s. Above 410s, it's going to be looking like, at least to me, bullish markets. And I that's crazy for me to think of. 
but I'm just going off the technicals here. We'll see what happens if we do get through those levels. And today is one of those days where I, I need to kind of just take it easy. Um, I know that I've missed a lot of this technology trade, so I can't just go chasing technology. I can rent some names in day trading action, but long-term swinging from here or swinging from here is just the kind of recipe for disaster, at least in the probability outlook. So I'm going to be a little slower today, but I'll definitely be looking at stocks today, team. You guys out there, let me know what you guys see. Kicking it to you, Ryan. And we'll see what else is being mentioned in the chat. You guys put up stocks that you guys are watching today, and we'll make sure to get to them. All right. So looking at the spy here, you covered a lot of it with the PCE print here this morning and all of that. Um, you know, one a couple of things to keep in mind here. First of all, we're still kind of low volume. So I, I understand that we're rallying here and the technicals do in fact look bullish, but it is low volume. The way I see it is that I still think we're going back over. I think meaning rolling back over. I still think my overall sentiment for the market is bearish and that we are going to go down. So I I'm kind of expecting that. Looking at where we're at in the spy though we have remained strong we've you know first we got through the 395 level then we took out the 403 level we've closed three times now above this green trend line that should now act as support on the way back down uh, which means i don't really think we're necessarily going to crash through it we'll have a battle or some sideways trading along there uh, for a top side range here, I mean, I guess we could always take a look at the uh, upside trend here. This is actually now going to be resistance. By the time we trade up here, this should actually line up with this 410.50 line that we have here. Um, so these should really kind of come into play at the same time. We'll see where we end up going here to uh, here today. Um, I just don't think the thing, the issues with the economy and, and everything are fixed. Um, I still think there's going to be problem. And as Mitch said about the rate hikes, I think that we might be done. Maybe there will be one more here and then maybe a pause. I, I don't see a pivot. I know that there's a camp out there saying, look for rate cuts by the end of the year. To me, that would actually signify a bigger problem if we went from raising too fast to a very, very short pause or no pause at all. And then cutting rates, I feel like that would be indicative that the economy is not actually strong. But we'll see what ends up happening. If I had to guess today, I would say we're probably going to pause at the next meeting and give it some time to see what the rate hikes do as they work through the economy. I'm not an economist. I can't figure out what Jay Powell is doing. I'm just here for the memes, all right? I The the Jay Powell memes that are floating around on Twitter are pretty awesome. Saw an awesome deep fake video <laughs> of him uh, yesterday that, that really had me cracking up. So anyway, Spy, you guys tell me if you can figure it out. Um, to me, I, I still think we're going over lower. The problem is I can't tell you when, and I haven't been able to position myself for that, but we're still keeping a watch on that. Uh, let's take a look at the movers tool. We're going to go through a couple of things here. First of all, we're going to go through Harmony Bioscience. We talked about this yesterday. I believe we talked about this the day that the short report came out too from Scorpion. Um, we did actually get a bounce yesterday, uh, uh, yesterday, right out of the open. We traded up into that 3450. We really sold off, found some support here at about 3150. I have it marked as 3168, but it's right there around 3150. And we've actually already reclaimed a point on that in the afternoon session. Now, today, we don't really have any pre-market uh, activity here, but I do expect this to kind of get in play today. We'll see if we get any type of volume um, spikes or, or, or any type of increase or expansion throughout the course of the day. I think with the thing that I would like to see first here is a move through this 3237, or excuse me, 3273, and then maybe through 33. I think if we do that, we could probably get some juice to test the 3350 or 34, but we'll see uh, if HRMY gets rolling here today. Uh, next is going to be GMVD, and this actually just recently started to spike. I noticed that we had a, a big day day before yesterday we really kind of gave all of those gains back and a little bit more yesterday and now we're kind of bouncing back here today let me see what's going on here looks like on wednesday uh joint collaboration to provide innovative remote patient monitoring solutions okay um that doesn't really seem like a blockbuster but who knows anyway Let's go ahead and mark off a couple of these lines just in case this gets uh, interesting here today. This looks like this is where it was stopping yesterday. Uh, if we break through that, I think that we'll probably find some more resistance at Wednesday's intraday highs. We'll see if we can end up getting up there. Uh, and then for some near term, we're going to do this and I'm going to do one more support area 
right in here. Okay. Uh, we'll see if GM VD, I, this feels familiar. feels like we might've actually traded this before, uh, off the scanner. So, um, see if I, if I can, if I can recall this, the, the tickers seem familiar, but maybe I'm mixing it up with something else. Uh, next one here is going to be CHSN. This is Chanson international. Man, I don't even know what this company does. I don't think I've ever heard of, oh, right. This is the new Chinese food company that IPO'd yesterday and then immediately sold off, right? Let's go back to the chart here and see. Yeah, so IPO yesterday didn't do all that well. Uh, we'll see if we uh, get a second day action here today. We were as high in the pre-market as 416. We've come all the way back down to 310. This is for sure hands off for me. I'm bringing this up to you because it's on the movers. IPO, new issue here. I am for sure, can tell you right now for sure not going to trade this one here today. If you do, be very, very careful. I wouldn't be surprised if this got halted up or halted, I should say, a uh, number of times here today. Uh, next is going to be Pally. I know we've traded this. This is Palisade Bio. I know we've traded this before. This actually having a decent after-hour session and pre-market here today. Uh, we're as high as 383. Let's check and see. Um, I didn't see any news here. Nope, not seeing anything great here. Uh, yesterday, we did get an upgrade from Maxim and a $50 price target. is a $3 stock, so uh, that's probably playing into it. Yeah, hold to buy and announce the $50 price target. Let's see if I can get that note and dig into that. That's a little bit interesting here. Uh, anyway, um, we did get as high as 383. We've come all the way back down. We actually found some support at 304. I think if we hold three here, that will probably keep this in play. Let's see if we get a curl and a move through the view app. Uh, currently, we're finding a little bit of resistance here at this 328 level. We'll see if we clear that out over the uh, opening print here. I'm going to I'm gonna wait on this one out of the gate. Um, and we'll see. We'll see if we can curl back up here. Uh, next one is going to be Spiro Therapeutics. This is S-P-R-O. Um, this one, I, I don't have a good feeling. I feel like this one might just kind of reverse and sell off today. We might have some weakness here. But if we are able to get some expanding volume, we might actually be able to play this. Again, maybe a curl through the view app. I got the view app at 161 and a half. So let's call it 162. Maybe a curl back up through this 160 might set the stage for a move towards 178. Um, we'll see. Uh, Jay Rice, good morning. Saw you mention it in the chat. UNG is up today. So natural gas is up. Uh, I don't know if any of you are trading the Widowmaker, if you're trading Boyle. Boyle, of course, is the levered ETF. UNG is the 1X product. Uh, both of these are up. I'm not even going to bother charting them. We'll see what NatGas does throughout the course of the session. These, of course, are going to be liquid for anyone else to trade. Um, the other thing that I think we should mention is probably going to cause some arguing and fights, but what the hell? We're going to mention DWAC. Of course, there's news out there that Trump is indicted and might get arrested. Uh, initially, that was good news for this stock. Don't know why you figure that one out. Uh, we do have the catalyst here. Uh, the shares were trading higher following the indictment of Donald Trump. Digital World is in the business, is the business combination partner of Trump Media and Technology Group. Um, I'll probably stay away from this one too, but we've seen some ridiculous moves out of this stock before. So if you're looking for the juice here on a Friday, if you're looking to gamble uh, and you don't want to bet the baseball games from opening day yesterday, DWAC might be your thing. I'm going to stay away from this though. So, um, all right, let's go through the chat here as we wait for Mitch to get back. By the way, I'm stealing something out of Mitch's book right now. I ended up getting some orange juice here this morning. Disappointed that it's Tropicana, but it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, taking that from Mitch's book. All right, let's see if uh, what else we've got here. Um, I'm watching here some small caps. Okay, smoke tuna. Let's Pally. We already talked about Pally. PYXS. We talked about that one earlier this week. Let's see where we are with that. I didn't see. I didn't check it here this morning. Um, okay. Actually, you know what? Shout out to you. This one probably going to be in play today. So again, we had another big day yesterday. We're holding some of these gains. So this is what I want to see. I definitely don't want to lose this 573 area. Um, I feel like because we've actually traded up, if we lose that support area, it might be gappy on the way back down. Let's see if we can actually cross through that VWAP. Looks like we're attempting to do that now. VWAP at 597, current price at 595. So let's see what happens if we move through the VWAP here. 632 going to be your first spot there. 693 going to be the next spot. Uh, if we can get up that high, we'll see. This is still running off of the news that it had a couple of days ago, right? This is the change in ownership were these buys these form fours I have to go in there and look 
look at that. Let's see. Uh, this was a halt fest yesterday during our meeting. Interesting. So, yeah, it looks like this is just kind of a multi-day move here on PYXS. We'll see uh, if we end up getting another trading opportunity here today. Um, the last time we traded this was Wednesday, right? That was this day. We got it. Yeah, it was up in the pre-market. We got a down move right out of the open. We got the expansion of volume through the VWAP, gave us a nice little trade. And then we got another trade in the late days. So um, even if this doesn't react here early today, uh, by the way, we are through that VWAP as we just talked about. Even if we don't get the trade here early today, maybe keep it on the uh, watch list and check back in on it later in the day and see if we get some more action here. So uh, that was a good one. The other one you were taking a look at here was VHC. Let's do that as well. Let's see. Okay. So what do we have here? This looks like this really went nuts yesterday. I don't have a price quote for some reason. Um, receives U.S. Court of Appeals decision. Traders circulating a tweet. Vertnex Holdings lost the CAFC affirming the inner parts review proceedings, which will likely terminate the case versus Apple and not collect the judgment. Okay, so this looks to me like they're not getting a $500 million payment. If I'm reading that right, maybe that's what's doing it here. Um, we'll see. I, I, I don't have an angle on this, but keep us keep us posted, Smoke Tuna, if I miss something on that. Um, let's see. Oh, you guys are just throwing tickers at me. We need Mitch back. Is it you and the shareholder update? Did somebody call? Oh, Mitch. Um, yeah. Hey, sorry, I'm just going. I'm going through. <laughs> I got you, I my friend. What do we want to look at? Here. I got you. Uh, I'm rolling. I'm rolling. Hand sleeves coming up. I'm looking at my he, Tesla swing that I'm going to get stopped out on probably, but let's go. Yeah. Uh, PLD, Prologis. This was PLD? Mentioned. Yeah, Prologis. Well, this, this was, me one. it was mentioned with no context. So I'm no not worries. sure. It's not a bad looking chart. I've, I've taken a look at this before. I've never traded this one before. Um, kind of. What I would really like on this stock is to move through one thirty. So before I get a, too excited. This is so if, if you get a move through one thirty, then then it won't be looking too bad, right? So we're almost there. Like well, we need to kind of like stair step our way to there. And so you can see how we're we're doing that right now. Ooh, ooh. So you want to continue the trend right now, not not cut through this body. You see how this body never went into this body. You want the same thing to happen. So pullbacks right now that I would be looking for this to kind of hold to are like 2246, right? And so if it could do that on the pullback here out the gates and not really cut down through uh, body-wise through that kind of 22, right? You could see a wick there, but you want to see the body closing higher and then really kind of opening a little bit higher than this 12246 and then closing above 12246. Continue that same trend on the daily. What else we got? Okay, real quick, uh, let's go to my charts here. Um, Mods, mm -hmm. you were at, you you were asking about LPTX and BTAI. LPTX is thirty five percent stock. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna spend time on that. But BTAI here, you found a pretty interesting one. We did have some big volume sticks yesterday. They looked to be sell volume. This stock was all over the place. Um, do, it does look like we're running into some resistance here at 1869, nice, or 1870 or thereabouts. When you look at the 15-minute chart, this becomes a little bit more clear. Certainly looks like we actually have bottomed here and we might be curling up on kind of a larger time frame. So if we take out 1869 and make a move towards 19, I have this level marked off at 1914. So maybe we can take that out. That puts 20 in place. So we'll see how much action and volume BTAI actually gets, but this is a pretty decent chart here. It looks like we're curling up off the bottom and again if we do get volume here uh this could actually be a trade here today good spot btai add this one to the watch list uh mcdonald's just ripping as of late you gotta try to make sure that you don't get into yesterday's bodies area but if you can hold that and then kind of just take off i understand why you'd be looking at this uh 2761 and you can see in the morning what do you have a lot of support there in the pre-market, right? Maybe slightly underneath it towards, let's say, 55s. If you wanted, let's just round it. Let's just do 45 or 50. We don't want to see 2745 broken there. We want to see an expansion through 279 on the up end on McDonald's. Uh, you could see maybe body holds towards this kind of hourly. Let's go to the hourly chart so you can see that a little bit more. So you see the resistance there. That's where I really would want it to hold. Don't want it to definitely break kind of this support here, 277. You get a wick down there and you get a recovery. It doesn't look too bad. Disney, uh, McDonald's, nice little bunch pattern. Trying to get through these highs to the left that are very important too. 279.40s. Next resistance. 
And then you got, of course, the 281, 67, and that's, I think, a 52 week high. Yeah, 52, 52 week high there. All right, let's keep going. Molin mentioned in the chat. No, no, bueno. Man. Why? Why? No, are bueno, man. There's, about this? there's other stocks. There's other stocks. That's the only thing I would say. Um, it's okay to think about it, but I mean, there's, it, it, it's not much there. Let's just be honest, team. Uh, SPCE, another thing to kind of pay attention to here that space stocks, they don't look good. But this could go out of business real soon. <laughs> Mitch, I, no, it's just, it's funny how uh, you I'm just put truth. it so bad. I, I, I know, I'm not arguing with, I just, I like just Black Sky. I, I like, like black how you're just sky like, technology, space stocks I, are trouble. This could go out of business. I, I like, it, you I might like as well have just sky. mic drop. You might as well have just been like, bloop, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, to give you guys perspective, like, I love Black Sky as a company. I love what they do, government contracts. But right now, space isn't it. You don't got investors looking to add sp space stocks. Uh, Virgin Galactic is shutting their other side of their space stock, but I thought that that would hit SPCE. And if you look at when that first kind of mention of that other stock going out of out of uh, business, ever since then, uh, SPCE is like down like 30%. So that's how you can sometimes think like you are thinking right now, folks, where everyone thinks SPCE is the one going out of business, but it's another one. It's, uh, v, it's, it's Virgin uh, Galactic Orbit. Not a Virgin Galactic Holdings. That's how they get you sometimes. All right, let's go to it, team. I will let you know that I did take a hit on some stocks out the gates here. I took a hit on Tesla to the short side, really small one. Um, and then I took a hit on a little bit bigger. On um, This is kind of like a full-size hit on Deer. And you guys can see those are spiking out the gates. So if you want to play against Mitch or for any reason you like those stocks to the long side, Take a look at them. They definitely got me out today. Now, AMD is one that I'm up big right now. And I'm about to take some profits here as we're starting to come down here. This is from Swing Trading yesterday. If you guys probably saw on my, I'm taking some profits right there. Boom. Just took a little bit of profits there at the 9621s. I have 97.53 um, to put it in perspective, right? And this morning, I was down a little bit, right? But we'll look to see how this kind of gets towards that downside action and continues down here. Big downturn there in AMD. This looks like a head and shoulders for me. That's why I went after it. I don't know if you guys see that here, but of course you could call this kind of like the head area. You could call this kind of like the left shoulder, right shoulder here, right? And then now we're starting to come through the neckline. What they call the neckline is kind of that bottoming support levels. If we crash like towards like 95 today, yeah, that's kind of looking like a head and shoulder topping action towards the 100. Socks S in play. Let's see if that's in play today because that I can rent for sure on the daily. Nice little pullback here to 17 here. Hmm, where's the VWAP? VWAP's down all the way to like 16.82. It's playing catch up right now. So I want to see a nice little deep pullback here towards 16.90s or 16.80s. All right, let's take a look at the Q's. Q's actually pushed up here out the gates, so we're, we're going to cut that outlook there. We're just going to stick to making sure that we don't get stopped out anymore on AMD. We're going to look to see if we could just take more profits. If we stop out break even, I'll stop out break even. I'm up about 1.4% on this position. It's not like a, a huge win either. Uh, real quick, I, uh, we're open. Go ahead, my friend. No, no, we're we're open here. I was just gonna say, uh, W was asking about Pally. Let's take a look here at Pally. Um, this actually pretty decent. We might have a trade right here, uh, three thirty eight. We were through the view app. Let's see if we push through three thirty eight um, and actually get some juice. If we do three sixty five, not out of the question here, Wally. So uh, or W, excuse me. So uh, let's see if we end up getting some push through here. Looking pretty decent. Here we go. Let's see. Let's get some more movement here. All right, I like X on the pullback. You know, I'm trying to get X to give it to me. I'm seeing uh, steel actually leading basic materials. Basic materials, a strong sector to begin with. Looking for these pullback entries to kind of turn around here. Let's 
what do I see here? Nice little flag pattern. Pally going W. Good call here. Uh, just watching watching the relative volume scanner. Pally looking like the best so far. Move through VWAP was at three thirty five. Volume looking good here. I I'm not in this. No position here for me. But this is looking good. You need a little bit of a push here. I would say if this reverses, maybe stop and then wait for it to set up again. Decent setup right here. Let's see if we can keep pushing through. On Pally. See, see an X curve a little bit here, team. This is the one I'm looking at right now. It's already she starting to get a nice little push there. I'll look for a little pullback towards 30s. Really looking for a move down here into the 26, 20s. That's where we have prior resistance on the hourly, but it might not even get there. Uh, Gary, yeah, they delayed their filing. Um, Char delayed their filing. We talked about that in the happy hour, I think, earlier this week. They delayed their filing. I think what they're trying to do is clean up uh, some of the old, the old like legacy debts and stuff in there. Um, complicated, but uh, we'll see what happens. I actually think that there's a fund trying to sell it down to right now, so it's being crushed every day. Um, but yeah, um, they are they they moved it. I can't remember April 10th now, maybe just the following week. We should be getting it pretty soon. Um, Cleveland Cliff, nice little start on the day. Nice little push up, looking for pullbacks on that one and then go after a little bit of some X. Uh, also see aluminum up, agricultural inputs, and real estate leading. So that Prologis play, probably not even doing too bad right now. Energy up, all sectors up, out the gates uh gmvd here real quick while we were talking about that uh this mm. did actually punch through the pre-market high looks like we're kind of back testing it here stopped at three this trade might not be over here we go up to three here again not in this one either there we go right through three we got a spike up to 310 there gmvd watch the volume on this one this is going to tell the story here today look at how big those volume sticks are this morning got a lot of uh, a lot of movement in there it yanked all the way back down it's kind of all over the board right now but let's let's watch gmvd today this is i don't think this is over amd now the 95 44 there we go team there we go swing trade and baby let's go team up about 2.2 percent on this one let's let it keep going here towards about 95 take some more profit here uh, and real quick, Carmen, just to kind of get this out of the way here, UNCY, uh, all of these lines, are, the ones in blue, these were added from before. So all we've really done here, big day on Wednesday, we've kind of given that some of that back, maybe 60% or so. Nothing really happening here this morning. Uh, no volume. Uh, really what we would need to see is a move up towards two here on pretty good volume. To me, don't really see anything putting this in play here today. Oops, didn't mean to change the ticker there. Let's go ahead and back out. Let's check out the 15 minutes, see if there's anything else. Maybe we do make another bit push back up towards this 220, but I don't see anything indicating that here today. Um, let's, let me look at the, the daily. Yeah, yeah. see, we, we've we've played this a lot in here. Uh, we've played this a lot in here. That may, Yeah, maybe this will curl. Maybe this will curl and give you a trade, but I don't see any indicator of that here today. I like um, some specialty retail stocks doing well right now. Amazon, Melly. Um, with that, maybe we get a continued movement in JD. JD had a really nice day yesterday. Maybe this kind of gets a nice little push up again. I'm taking a look at it right now. How's Baba doing? Baba having a decent day today. PDD was one yesterday. I had it on alert. It's kind of upset we didn't have live trading. That would have been a monster. That one was one that I was looking for a nice move in. I gotta say though, Mitch, your uh, your little <clears throat> AR mouse head that you put on for the quarterly meeting was pretty sweet. <laughs> though. So I'm not gonna lie. Now I will say this: I don't know if you heard me yelling from the back. I was yelling, "Mitch, hold your L." Mitch, hold your L. Did you hear that at all? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Trust okay, me, so when it was our team that won the little contest for the bracket. And apparently yeah. someone said that Mitch was complaining about something. So I started. Oh, yeah, I was you, complaining. Well, it was me that got the W. So I was yelling that you should just hold on to your L real quick. So it was just, me that it was me that put the fake news sound on fake news. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's okay. fake news. That's hilarious. Hilarious. All right. I said so that's phony speaking, stuff. 
Speaking of that, um, DWAC looks like it's a little all over the place here today. We did just cross through the view up again. I'm I'm not going to mess with this one here today. I don't need to. I had a really good yeah, week, there's, there's, and I don't other... need to ruin my week on a Friday uh, just because of what's going on here. But this did move through the 1413 and is through the view app now. We all know uh, how this thing can move around here. So let's see what's going on. This is moving. Look at rum today. That thing's getting the flush down right yeah, now. Saw that one. Uh, that was actually, what was it? Q4 earnings or something like that. Let's take a mm -hmm. look. Almost towards my target profit in AMD. We got down to 95.27. I have out there. I'll take Ooh. like 95.12s if we could come down there, but really nice move there up about 2% there in AMD. And it's interesting that we're not seeing it all around. Just AMD kind of taking a big beating right now. Do you guys see another big techs taking a big beating? I only see AMD doing that right now. Is there a negative news out there on AMD? I, I haven't checked. I will check in a sec. Let me go over Rumble real quick. Shelly, uh, time to kidnap Buddy. By the way, just so you're aware, I was successful in teaching Buddy Taekwondo. So uh, <laughs> try that at your own risk. He's got those little claws on his little fists of fury and he knows how to use them now so um that's you know roll the dice if you will but i think he's going to be safe now all back to reality here rumble interesting thing here is we did have earnings this thing was an absolute monster yesterday we traded up from nine to about 12 and a half we gave back some of those gains yesterday and we're really finding weakness here in the pre-market and around the opening print so it's almost retraced this entire move here one thing to say for a quick day trade is that if we do get down to this 938 i wouldn't be shocked if we bounced around here but that bounce could be very very, very short lived. So, if you're going to play something like that, keep yourself protected. All right. Still taking a look. Basic materials strong today, technology strong today. And now getting a price alert on Unity here, team. There we go. This is one that I've been actually looking for it to start getting going here. I'm actually going to take a swing trade on Unity here. Um, so, I'm looking for just the slightest pullback here underneath 30s to start getting a little position here for Unity. I'm going to build one up here, team. This is going to be a swing trade. So I'm going to work my way down towards the kind of like 29s. But we could start getting just going here. So, all right. I'm going to take a really small starter here at 30.04, um, just in case it just kind of just shoots off on me. But definitely reaching here. The only way I can reach here is if I come in with such a small size here that the planned attack is for pullbacks. So I'll be looking for some pullbacks there for Unity, but this is more of a daily outlook reversal and coming back up off the bottom here. So um, I'm going to play that. W, Wally, W, I, I, I can never remember if you guys are the same, but you're asking about the same stock. Uh, AI here, interesting spot here uh, on AI. We did sell off out of the open, but we really kind of caught a bounce there at a, what, 22 or 27.20. Uh, pretty ferocious bounce here. So. I wasn't on that, but if you're day trading that, definitely take some of those gains. As you can see, we're coming up to this 2850 level. Oh, man, this chart switched again. Square strong me. today. Also, team square pretty strong. Shop strong. G G oh, those might be in the money. That might be a closing trade. All right, let me... Um, so here's... So on AI, here's what we're looking at. If you look at a 15-minute chart here, we've pretty much come all the way off of this previous support level to me now that we've made this journey here i think that we're gonna try to take out this high i, I think 30 is probably in play currently at 28 14 let's see if we trade up to 30 28 50 gonna be your first mile marker there well i am actually gonna pop a line on here because i do think that this 30 level is going to be in play or in play soon. Good spot on this one, by the way. Q's going higher there. Spy going higher. We're at the 405s. Man, could you think you would be at the 405s after a bank crisis? Uh, 405, isn't that a freeway in Los Angeles? That's all I know about that. Real quick, Mitch, I'm going to shout this out <laughs> here because I agree with this comment. Money Mitch, impressive. You keeping your professional demeanor this morning. Well done. It will serve you throughout your life and career. Mitch, I got to say, that's one <laughs> of the things that I like. I know that you've got some, you know, you like to play sound. You like to chair dance. You like to imitate yeah. DMX, but you really do have an underlying professionalism about you. I agree with Sabrina here. It's one of the reasons I like doing the show with you. Keep it up, my man.
Yeah, I, I, I get a little more wild here on live trading, but that's just because, you know, I feel like you, you guys are the, the, the type of crowd that can handle that life. Um, but yeah, definitely pre-market prep. I'll always try to keep my composure and, and I try to just to bring what I can bring right to the table, right? It, it's always for me trying to, what I talk about, point like warning flags, look at here, have this type of thinking in your mentality because I can't tell people what to think and I don't like to do that. But I just like to always talk about what I'm seeing in the market so that you guys can take at least an approach from there, right? Uh, and real quick, Matt saying, GM, I'm late to the action. Matt, you're in luck here. We don't take attendance, so no problem. Um, but just make sure that you don't compound your problems. Don't don't come into the market late and try to make up for lost time. I've done that before, and it's mm. uh, it's not good. It's not good. One that's what coming happened? Back. One that's coming back that's having a really good day is Starbucks. And with that one being said, I'm about to take a swing trade that you guys are going to love me out here. I've been waiting to do this one for a while now. I'm excited for this one. I can't even help myself a little bit here. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm putting out the order. Let me wait till I get filled. But I, I, you guys see it on the screen there. Oh, man, I can't wait for it. Guys, you guys don't even know. You guys are ready. Are you taking bros? Oh, uh, you know it. I'm waiting for it. I just want to get filled. I need some Dutch bros, man. Jeez. So bros, that's the type of day that I'm having. I need a coffee. Let's see if I get filled. The only problem with Dutch bros is the fills, man. Come on. Come on. Just trying to get filled. Just trying to get filled. Pally trying to cross through that 328 and then maybe VWAP after it. By the way, IONQ, uh, this thing just moved out of the gate here. IONQ, oh. huge move. 550 going to be that uh, after hours. I think this was after hours yesterday, was it? Yeah, this is after hours yesterday. We ripped through that. What's going on with IONQ here? Needham Needham reiterates by nine dollar price target. Looks like they had earnings yesterday. Earnings look mixed but good overall. Market is rewarding at IONQ here. Uh, if you're going to swing this, one of the things that I would do is actually kind of wait for a pullback here. Maybe if it pulls back to support, this would be a potential swing trade. All right, let's see the stocks go a little bit higher there. There's Unity taking higher, team. So uh, the swing on Unity, I'm going to take it. And this is all based off a daily outlook here. So I saw this kind of bearish candle and I had it highlighted. I said, if we could get back through those levels, this could be reversal action. So I'm actually going to be looking to see now if we can get a bullish engulfing candle closing towards 3072. That will be good confirmation that we could reverse on Unity. And when I've seen Unity come up, it makes some really nice moves here. So perfect example is looking at the past, right? Looking at the history. Look how this one kind of did a similar move here. Kind of looked like a bearish outlook. Then all of a sudden reversal, boom, started to push higher and then really took off there towards the 40s. So we'll see if we can get a move there back towards the 40s. That would be a big move there. Unity. Unity. Looking at like looking at even ARKK as a possibility. I know that might sound crazy. But look at the action that you're seeing today. Look at what's going on in these stocks. Look at Square. Square's going higher here right now, but about 3%. Um, there's a lot of Kathy names green, all of them, I think. Literally all the names that I have for ARKK are in the green today. What does that tell me? Risk off type of day and stocks are pushing. I'd look at Tesla for pullbacks, at least for right now. As long as the trend stays in the, in the direction that we're in, it's pushing higher. Look at the Qs up there to 317. I'm looking for pullback. X was one that I was looking to try to play today. Um, still haven't seen the pullback that I wanted to get after, but it's trying to build up there to the upside. Aluminum having a really decent day there. AA is where I would be looking. Alcoa on this pullback was pretty decent here. Let's take a look here. Came back to the VWAP, now coming back towards the high end there. CENX is another one you can look at. That one's lagging a little bit behind it underneath 10. Looks like it's trying to get through 10. Look at that little bunch up pattern. You can see how it's trying to get through there. Let's just see if it can actually make that next step up from there. I would say the next move from there would be through this 996 
That's the bunch the move. And then you got a 1014 ahead where we could see the slowdown coming in to at C E N X Century Aluminum. And real quick here, we do have Pally going. So remember, we were saying maybe through that 328 and through the view app, bingo. 20 cent move here so far on that. Actually, 21 cent. It looks like it's trying to go higher here. If 350 gets snapped, I think 365 definitely coming again. We're already up 20 from that scalp through the 328. Good stuff. If you took it, make sure you book that gains. We're still in that mode where we're booking gains, right? If you get 10, 15%, you get any type of gain on one of your trades, don't be afraid to take it. Pally, nice little move here, though. Spy testing high a day. Someone said, yeah, I mean, it's up there. It's trying to like bunch up through this. I'd be looking right now for like, so I always look at situation, right? What could, what would be a, like a turnaround level for me below 405, 405, 14s, 15s. There's a lot of bunching on the five minute there. If I go to the 15, it'll look a little bit more like right there. You can see it, that little bunch right there. I wouldn't want to see us break 405, which is actually below the VWAP. So it could pull back into that area, but I wanted to see one break below that. As long as that can stay, we could just continue riding the wall of worry. Another thing to look at is financial services for signals of really hard downside. If that doesn't happen, well, I don't think we, we can just continue to climb. Look at JPM since yesterday from that bottoming action at 127.81s. It went up there almost to 130. So that just goes to show you that look at this hourly. You can see how they were attacking that 128 on buys. Now I want to see if that holds there. If we break down, let's say 127 on JPM, that's where we got to be kind of concerned. Right now, I feel like this is just climbing up, climbing up, climbing up, and they're buying those 128s on JPM right now. Of course, you guys take that with a grain of salt. That's just how I see it. All right, NEXT uh aerospace and defense Ooh, i'm a little frustrated on that one i had lockheed martin earlier in the week and i kind of got rid of it but it just looks like it's trying to set up here i just i find it hard to trade these that really move slow these are really slow swings lockheed martin but i kind of like it off the 470s for it to come back up through 490s so you're risking about three bucks for potentially a move that's about like 17. It's a good risk to reward, but can you wait for it? That's the hard part in that type of trade. Uh, Jay Rice asking NXT, you ever buy any, Ryan? No, Jay, I didn't. And I can tell you exactly why. My bearish outlook on the market That's... overall kept me out of any new overnight trades. Um, I'm pretty sure, if I recall correctly, you told us about this right here. <laughs> right? 31. And did I get that right? Any In the 31 handle? five handles up from where you told us about it here on this show no i didn't buy any uh, i didn't buy any my bearish outlook has me dialing it back on positions that i'm holding overnight here this was a good call though this was a good call we got some sharp people yep yeah jay i'm gonna i'm gonna consider that one missed i know that you did call that here props for that but i did not take it keep keep shouting them keep shouting them keep doing it you're an asset Marky. to our community Marky wanted to talk to me about a video. If you guys ever have a video you guys want me to check out, a trade, whatever it may be, hit me up. I'm always about it, right? Because I always love finding uh, knowledge through others. I, I really believe in that. Um, I always feel that everyone has a strength and weakness to offer you. And if they're willing to offer you their strength, they found something. You might as well sometimes listen. You never know what you can find out. Uh, so definitely you guys can always reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, that's at MoneyMitchBZ. Or you guys can reach out to me at Mitch at Benzinga.com. As simple as that. Uh, Mitch, do you take a uh, meme video? Do oh, you, I take you... anything. I take I might, anything. I, I might find this one here real quick. Let me, uh, <laughs> let, me, let, me let me find We'll watch it as a group I did here. get bros, though. I did get the bros. So my bros out there, I'm in it. I got uh, 3155s. I'm, I'm going to take a shot. I'm going to take a shot. Starbucks, I, I want to see go higher, too. But I, I saw the move. I saw this yesterday. Yeah. I saw this yesterday. I laughed really hard. We're going to watch it here together. You guys ready? All right. You put it up whenever you're ready, my friend. Let me know if boom, you can boom. hear it. Give me a, give me a thumbs oh, up. If you won't be can able to hear it. hear it. You won't be able to hear it. Stop it. I already know. I already know. So stop. It like, stopped. Okay. So st uh, stop your screen and reshare your screen. And at the bottom left, you're going to see a tab that, that will, that will do share uh, system sounds. 
Okay, so I'm sharing a s entire screen. Uh huh. And then you see on the bottom left. Share system audio. Got it. Okay. Boom. Here we go. You guys ready for this real quick? You guys ready now, for this? Now we We're going to watch will. this together. It's only 50 seconds, but tell me if you guys think this is funny because I was in hysterics yesterday. I already know what these regards are going to do on Wednesday. Run the market up into OPEX into JPM's call wall at 4,065. <laughs> these regarded bulls on WSB are going to front run. But they forget. <laughs> this is a meme, guys. This is a meme. Full disclosure. There's a lot of time. You got you missed forget. it. I am the CEO of Spy. And there is a lot of time until Friday. Y'all are making me warm up my hand for the pimp smack again. You think Jamie Dimon wants to lose money and get deposed in the Epstein case the same week? Yes, yes. April is a bullish month, but for that seasonality to help you, oh, you gotta man. jump first going into it. Just listen to Spot Gamma and Jam Cross or something. You've got a copy. Uh, of Hit them up on Group Me or something to get a copy for your homework. Again, I implore you to remember: fuck your puts, fuck your calls. Jay Powell has you by the balls. God bless. It's all fake news. I already know. It's all fake news. It's Wednesday. phony stuff. It didn't happen. Oh God. <sighs> So oh, man. That's here's the is, thing. Man. Here's That's the thing. Mitch. We spent all of this time talking about your exceptional professionalism. And then I went ahead and found a meme that I just thought was absolutely hilarious. Folks, I hope that you enjoyed that. I was in hysterics yesterday. When I saw that. E even Kramer. So, I heard him. I heard him. No, y'all wouldn't buy that. Y'all <laughs> fucking stupid. Um, so real quick here, uh, real quick. Uh, who's asking this? Uh, Brady. Brady Pomeroy, would you tweet that I have to retreat? So I, first of all, I can't take credit for this. I didn't make this. This was another person on Twitter. <laughs> I found it. I thought it was hysterical and I already retweeted it. So if you go to my Twitter account uh, at our Faluna, you'll be able to see that retweet. Oh, go ahead Lord. and do it. Just thought it was hysterical. I thought it was good. Definitely smash yeah. the like on that one. Definitely Ryan bringing yeah. in a little humor here. Killing it here. I am the CEO of Spy is my favorite line in that whole thing. <laughs> Gotta have a sense of humor to be a trader. Yo, I totally agree with this. I think that that's, that's underrated. There is definitely time to be very, very serious. I don't, I'm not pushing the gas on any of my money trades. So I'm trying to, uh, trying to have some laughs here. I'm liking the wing stop, man. I'm, I'm, I'm all, I'm in the restaurants today. What is going on with me? Look at this team. This looks good. Look at the daily chart on Wingstop. Nice little nice little flag pattern after it came back up here. It did a flag pattern here. And when stocks repeat patterns, I look for that. Because stocks that can repeat patterns, what do, what do traders just do? They just kind of target the same pattern. I mean, the stock likes to flag. The stock likes to flag, man. I could just see flags all around this thing. So, I, I mean, it even tried to do a flag here, just didn't kind of accomplish it. But flagging action here on the wing, the wing stop. Who's going to wing stop with me? I I've had that. I've had so many wings this trip that I think I might be out of wings for a little bit. <laughs> I've had a lot of I've had a lot of wings on this trip to the office here. It's an interesting one. Yum. You sold some wing and some yum. Yum is looking good, man. Yum. All right, looking around. Let's see what else is going on, team. The market is is decent. Dave is saying PYXS fell off the, the cliff. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, down 24%. Oh, good Lord. Spy, a lot of topping good action. Lord. 405 70s, team. So, so real quick here. So, Dave, uh, regarding your comment Fair about enough. PYXS, let's take a look at this real quick. Uh, Mitch, it. I'll go. I'll go right back. To no, you. no, go for it. You're here's good. here's why we talk so much about these support levels. Look what happened to this stock when it lost five seventy three. This was clearly the spot. This lined up with the pre market low. As soon as this spot gave way, this is a waterfall to the downside waterfall to the downside now maybe it finds some support down here look at this okay so maybe it finds some support right around here which was the intraday low yesterday but when it loses these support don't stick around no reason to be a hero no reason to be a hero there 
I agree. You gotta you gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them. I say. <laughs> That's actually yeah. I've heard that song a bunch of times. Got to, got to, man. Know when to hit the gas pedal. Know when to hit the brake. A lot of traders can never figure that one out. When are you really doing well? When are you do really doing bad? If you could really catch that and kind of manage your your capital that way, I think that's what the best traders really do. Because the truth is that you're always going to run into some kind of inconsistency with your pattern. That's just normal. That's just kind of probability, right? But the good traders, what they can do is that when things are working for them, they don't think twice. They just keep doing what they've been doing, which is playing their system. And then they, they hammer on, they hammer on, they hammer on, and they make pretty good up equity moves. We got to make those upswings and control the downswings. Uh, BBAI, by the way, we talked a little bit about AI earlier, which had a nice bounce. BBAI, Big Bear AI, pushing the highs here as high as 213, real strong on good volume. Let's check in on AI too and see if that's still making a decent move. So that's actually holding the gains from its bounce. So we're holding higher here, but we've been unable to take out 2850 yet. That's still in play here on ticker AI, 2850. And actually we're curling back up to it. I think if we take out this 2850, we might go higher here, folks, on AI, ticker AI. Yeah, it's not a bad one to see a stair step move now. I wouldn't expect to see too much like big explosion, but it does look good for stair step action. You can see that on the hourly, how it's stair stepping, right? What I mean by stair stepping, it's slowly going up, but it is going up, right? You can see this higher lows, higher lows, higher lows trend, and you can even see it even more on a four hour chart. Look how this looks. Look how pretty this looks, team. Yeah, look at this. yeah. yeah, that's not Ding. bad, actually. And yeah, so what I mean by stair stepping action, right? Just stair stepping its way and now has kind of pushed. AI, by the way, AI trying to take out 2850 here. You actually might, I mean, let's see if it takes this out. 2847, it's button up against that. I think that if this takes it out, it's going to pop. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, five cent pop through there. Let's see if we go higher here. Six, eight. 10 we got a 10 cent pop do they yank it or do we push farther here all right finally got a pullback here level here for i'm looking at uh x on this pullback This might this push in AI here might not all happen in one move too. That's the other thing. To me, just looking at what you see on the screen here, if we get volume that sticks around today, to me, to my eye, 30s in play here. That's just from reading what I'm seeing here, looks like 30 is going to be in play if this volume sticks around. If it dries up, maybe we retrace this move. W, I think you were asking me about this earlier, or Wally, whichever one it was. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep mixing it up. Um, looks like this might attempt 30. Sorry, Mitch, go ahead. No, you're good. No, I just wanted to let you guys know I am in a starter here on X. X. Got there for the 2618s, willing to add at 2615s, hold towards 2608. Looking for a move back up towards the 45s and actually higher than that. I think we can get a, a move on the daily candle to do 2650. Uh, we're at about a 20 cent. Yep, we're 20 cents here now through this uh, spot here on AI. Twenty-three cents. Now we go and we out here, folks. Nice one. We out here. You heard it, baby. Ryan, baby, coming in here. We out here. <laughs> oh, I'm glad someone's got a soundboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Mitch, man. one of these quarterlies, the two of us need to come to the office. At Dude, the I'm same coming quarter. to the next one. I already okay. announced it. We're okay, doing I'm it. going. Okay, We're I'm, doing I'm, it. I'm, I'm going. I'm so July. It's, July. it's right before July 4th. So, okay. Oh, I think, oh, I think there's going to be a uh, golf trip attached to the end of that one. Yeah, I mean, it's summertime, right? You, I got to go yeah, find go. out my, let's my go. swing. And you guys got to see me lose some golf balls. Let's do it. All right, Jay, real quick, Jay Rice. 
Um, talking about booking.com, this has been a larger discussion going on in, in the happy hour, going back months. All right. So I just want to, I kind of want to briefly set the stage here. Jay is saying uh, booking new 52 week highs, uh, which is correct, by the way. Let's see. Was it on my thing here? Uh, I'll, I'll go find it in a sec, but you're right. Um, travel is strong. Like folio likes the cruise names on any weakness like folio. Okay. I don't get that part, but uh, in any case, travel is strong. Here's the thing. Don't you think that travel is going to dry up this year? I'm of the camp that as the consumer tightens, you're going to see traveling kind of tighten a little bit, right? There was pent up demand for traveling during COVID that's kind of working its way out. Now we're going to have an economy that's that's getting weaker. The consumer is going to be getting weaker. I feel like travel is going to be one of those things that comes in here. Now, I say that looking at this chart, which is clearly breaking out of this formation here. We talk about these formations all of the time. And to be honest, if you told me that 2712 is next here, it looks pretty good considering the chart. But I just think that, I don't know, to me, I, I, I don't, I think travel's going to dry up here. So I'm a little bit more, maybe I'm just being too bearish. Straighten me out if I'm not. Buddy um, and Ryan snooping. I don't think I know what that means. Buddy watching the, Ryan on Benzinga. The thing here, I think that mm. you, you're you leaving out is, is how do, how did, how did the, the hotels, the airlines, the travel industry get around that? So yes, we could see a decline in demand. That's what you're telling me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, Ryan. Yes. So what I would say to that, and it'd be the counter argument, would be they can get around that by increasing the margins gained in, let's say, every transaction. So if you guys look at the airline prices nowadays, you look at the hotel prices nowadays, they're a lot more than they were two or three years ago. So with that being said, Ryan, I think that they'll make an adjustment in their pricing to adjust for that demand. Okay. And to your point here, Jay actually adds another point. And this is actually something that we've seen. This has been one of the big arguments or on the other side of that discussion uh, that we've been having in happy hour. Could be, Ryan, but the high-end consumer is still strong. We saw that in Lulu. Cruise ship bookings are strong throughout 2023. This is spot on. Uh, mm -hmm. This is spot on. And this, this I think, Mitch, kind of you know blends into what you were saying here. If they're going to increase margins on the transactions that they are getting in order to keep profitability where it's at, they're not going to have any trouble still getting that high-end consumer that Jay is talking about. We know that already. That's a good yeah. point. That's what makes the market, though, folks. That's what makes That's the market. What makes love, the market. by the way, love having discussions about traders that have different opinions. You see how valuable that can be? I, I love it. We got to do more of that. Got to do All more right. of that. Hmm. Looking at Amgen. That's, that's been strong. I'm going to be looking for pullbacks towards like 238 at any point on the dailies. Gilead starting to have a nice little day there. Could look for Regeneron to have a good one. Moderna's already had a decent day. Pull back to the view app here. I like maybe 152 outlook for Moderna. But nice little, nice little day there for Moderna. And then I would look for the drug manufacturers, the big boys, to see if those could get going here. So Johnson and Johnson, maybe to the upside. I'm liking the health names right now. Um they are starting to get moving. This NVS, this was the one that I was trying to talk to you about, Ryan. I wanted to buy it literally on this day, but I didn't know how to approach a stock like this that has gapped up like this. I have trouble buying Oh, this these. was the island. So so, so do yeah. I, Mitch, which is why I like the floating island because the, the reason – you're on a daily chart right there, right? So that yeah. second green candle, what I would love to see is that second green candle come in, test the bottom of the first green candle, and hold. The reason that I want to see that is because that gives me the confidence to buy it. Right mm -hmm. now, it's running away. You have no idea when that stock's going to reverse. How are you going to chase that? We talk about not chasing all of the time. That's what it looks like. But when you get that formation, when it comes back towards the bottom of the candle, holds, and then moves higher, that's where I get the confidence. Now, that didn't happen here. So we probably you know, wouldn't have ended up buying this based on the same thing. Real quick here, I want to answer a question in the chat Let's here. Uh, this was about one of the stocks on the list here today. Um, why can't I find it anymore? Um, 
Oh, here, Matt saying, what's going on in GMVD? So GMVD down 30%. Let's first take a look at the chart so you can understand why Matt's asking that. Huge rip off the 314 high into a downside halt, opened up lower, continuing to plummet here. This actually might be halted again. Looks like I think it is. That's GMVD. GMVD, it's halted again to the downside here. You're asking what's going on here. Offering announces pricing of a 9.6 public offering of 12 million shares at 80 cents right here, right after the open. That's what's going on here. That's why the stock's down 30%. To me, this is hands off. Find something else. Uh, three abdo. We do not take spamming lightly here. No reason to do that. You're going to take a break for five minutes in the corner, my man. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's don't one spam tickers, folks, accept, man. Don't spam tickers. There's no need. We, 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 we try to cover enough here. I think for you guys to try to spam. That's what I, that's what I would say. BBAI is still strong here today. Snap bouncing back today. Doesn't look too bad. X now in the green for me, team. I did get into that on those pullbacks. I have an average of 26.19. Looking for this to go back up through the highs of 26.46 today. And you guys know how I, I, I love my X. The only question. X don't give it to you. Wait for you to get it on your own. X don't give it to you. Open up the door to spill. If only X was like a delivery system. They, someone should make a shipping company and then buy the rights to that song. <laughs> oh, that's what we need. More shippers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would that be a hammer on the five minute? Let's talk about that. Uh, but Cleveland Cliff also looking good here. Um, could go after two steel names. X is already kind of pushing here. I kind of like this. I don't normally do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really kind of limit the exposure here. So I'll go with a smaller size, but I'm taking a little bit of, of Cleveland cliff here at 1827. Let's go. Let's see what happens here. Um, and AMD still kind of working for me. Uh, Bros up decently. Unity up decent. X now starting to lift. Let's see if that can really kind of push here. Um, and then now let's go to some different ones here. Let's go to the spy. You wanted to take a look there. Five minute, let's go. Um, so the reason why I wouldn't consider that a hammer candle is that um, it's at the top. And so hammer candles at the top would be kind of more, you'd be looking at what's called a, uh, a hanging man. Uh, hammer candles are more kind of like at the bottom. But one thing I do see here is what? You see a bullish engulfing candle here, right? That, that shows bullish strength, right? And then now we're looking to see if we can make another one. What do we mean by that? So I want to see a green candle close above all these bodies. If we can get one green candle close up above all these bodies and calculate all the prior price action, that would be kind of that bullish engulfing look. A move back below and we'd get kind of more of a bearish engulfing look and we'd get the pullback action. Let's see what happens. Like always, we don't know where it's going to go. Just kind of describing what I'm seeing. AMD catch up trade to the semis. It could be. It could be coming its way back. I, I mean, it is working its way back. I'm still short it, but that's just because I'm so I'm deep into the green. Um, I've taken profits already on that AMD trade, so I'm looking for a move back down. But like always, take a look around. The queues were pretty strong. Nvidia was strong today. AMD seems like the only one that was weak out of these out of these bunch. Qualcomm not the strongest, but not coming down. Intel's still strong team. That one's still actually making a decent move on the daily. Look how it's really getting rampant, and it's going away from the nine, showing the strength there. Definitely strong move there in Intel. All right, let's keep going. Let's see what else is going on out there. Cleveland Cliff giving me a little bit of a pullback. Gonna have to hold here. Hold towards like the eighteen. Ryan, there is a spider on your headphones. Your troll game is not quite at Shelly's level. Let's see what you could be talking about. I think it's just an R. <laughs> Book getting thick offers above 41. We'll see what happens. It's just an R. See the spy action here. Now it's starting to come down for the pullback. We'll see if we get a pullback. X pulling back here. Giving you the pullback, Mitch. You know it. 
Mitch, how did opening day go for you? I didn't watch a single game yesterday, and I'm pissed. It's good. You were in Detroit. You would have watched Detroit Tigers lose to, of course, the Tampa Bay Rays, baby. So I, so I did listen. I, we were actually driving at one point, and we had the Rays-Tigers uh, game on the radio, but I didn't see any. Don't worry. Don't worry. They they didn't score a run. They got shut out by the Rays, 4-0. McClanahan, McClanahan dealing, huh? Come on, dealing. Yo, it was the first inning, and he's just like lightly throwing 100. <laughs> like Sasaki, lightly throwing 100. <laughs> lightly throwing 100. Mitch, I was just telling people yesterday, of all of the things that I did sports-wise when I was a kid, I'd have traded any of it for a, a mid-90s fastball. If I could have thrown 90s, that would have been the highlight of my sports life when I was young. Yeah, man, I, I, I can clearly say I never threw 90s. I think the uh, highest I ever got clock and it wasn't a strike, but like 88, but that yeah, was like, that's like not, that's something yeah. that like, that's like something you can do like in maybe like a bullpen in the game. I'd be closer towards like 84, 85, but that's just how it is team. But yeah, lightly throwing a hundred. I mean, come on. And he's a lefty too. So it's kind of a, a different angle at a hundred. There's not many lefties that throw a hundred. Spy just battling. There it put in a nice little indecision candle, a doji on the uh, last five. Rum, by the way, after its sell-off here, looks like maybe we've was that a sound bit? No, that was something in your background. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say someone hit the gong in the office. I, yep, oh, I see it. I the see gong, it. I see it gong. swinging there. Oh someone's man, someone's making okay. some sales, baby. That's right. That's exactly what it is. Uh, real quick on rum. Um, yeah. so that we talked about the sell-off, right? They had earnings yesterday. Uh, we kind of sold off out of the open here. Looks like it's actually found a bottom. Let's see if it actually can retest and break through this 1020 here. If it does view app at 1045, could absolutely see that, um, being in play here. AI killing it says the chat. Spy trying to make a little up move. My Tigers hurt me a little yesterday. Yeah, my buddy that I was riding in the car with, Tigers fan, uh, not happy. Apparently, some of his buddies think they could be a 500 team this year, but rough start against McClanahan yesterday. I mean, they can be a 500 team. It's just not going to be against the, the East. Wait till they play their, their division. Yeah. Yeah. Their division is, is not as strong. Oh, is Aaron Bree here? Can, Aaron, can you hear me? I don't even know if Bree's in here. Bree had Bree had a a bet on his uh, Cardinals. So I want to see how that panned out. Did the Cardinals mm. win yesterday? The Cardinals? Um, I'm not sure. Hey, I'm gonna. I, I, didn't, I didn't take a look. Did not take a look on that one. Let's see. Excellent they didn't. Bet. They lost. Oh no, poor Bree. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give Bree a pat on the back. <laughs> uh run by the way uh, looking like it's approaching the seven this uh 1020 let's see if we can get above it here it's finding more resistance here oh, yeah. all i had to do was talk about it and they yanked it back all right let's see if there's anything in the red communication services financial services leaking here um let's see if that actually goes into the red but uh how's bank of america bank of america red there from the open coming down a little bit jpm coming down a little bit this is where the the turn usually turns a little bit is when these get really weak but can tech just continue to drive higher and hold us up here we'll find out toro breaking above three here breaking above 295 it looks like toro t-o-r-o T O R O. There you go. Nice little three break there. Like the 15 minute look. Five minute, nice little ascending triangle here. Nice little pattern there. Broke above that 290s. Ba bomb. Not a bad one there. Pullbacks at three could be risked off of the like kind of the 285 area. Let's see how let's see it on the one. 
Doom, doom. We got through that three, 316. Somebody hit that sell button. <laughs> Let's see if it flows through that 316. Pack B, uh, Buzz, good call here on Pack B. Pack B curling, um, breaking out of the a, sideways trade. That had a buy rating. Yeah, um, it did. Up, yep. Higher it. Cowan upgraded the stock from market perform to outperform, raised the price target from 13 to 15. Exactly right. Uh, high today, intraday high, 1098, currently at 1073. So we push here. You get any type of expanding expanding volume 11 magnet looks to be in place sorry about that yeah i think this is also a kathy name if, if i'm not incorrect there i like the monthly outlook especially if we get okay. you get back up above like 1250 i mean these are the monthly candles that looks like some sideways action but if you get it through this like kind of rectangle here on the monthlies yeah that could look really nice I believe this is in kathy's name too How's Kathy doing today? Look at that. Art going a little bit higher here. What's doing well in ARKK? Let's find out. DNA having a decent day. That's a cheap, cheap name. Having a good one. CERS having a good one. PD. Well, it's Unity, baby. Let's go, Unity. That swing's working out right now. T Doc having a good one. Can you believe that? Hello, Doc. Ah, having a decent day uh roblox definitely one that i talked about could get a move on i like the daily chart on this one as you're starting to approach here through these kind of trend line can you just start kind of really pushing out from here having a good outlook there on roblox beam coming back these are those uh kind of therapeutic names hood even having a decent day shop continuing higher twilio roku tesla coin bouncing back a little bit I don't, i'm scared of coin but um, yeah and, and another one here being mentioned in the chat becca good morning becca uh riven Riv, rivian excuse me r-i-v-n so interesting daily chart here on rivian real quick first of all it does look like we're actually coming off the bottom this previous support that's now resistance maybe we break through that here we take a look at the intraday chart here real strong uh, took out yesterday's intraday high. We do have the expanding volume that we love to see here. We're a little extended away from the view app, so I would imagine we kind of pull back towards the view app, but that might set up another upside trade here. Uh, Rivian looking like it's trying to break above this area. Next area puts us in the 16s and then 17 and a half. Good spot there on Rivian. No position on Rivian, but this looks decent. All right, might get out of X if we cut through towards the 2605 area. I'll get out through there. We'll see what happens on that one. Cleveland Cliff also pulling back a little bit there. So just keeping an eye on these steel trades as they pull back. How's our spy doing there? We're just playing around with that kind of box area, right? We still haven't even pulled back to the VWAP. That's actually a bullish sign, but we just need to kind of actually now expand up here towards like 406. Give us that breakout to 406. We can see this continue in the left. What's also continuing to lift there is AMD. It might have just been like kind of the, one of those bearish kind of cut downs, and then all of a sudden it recovers all day. Because it's recovering right now. We'll see what happens on that one. Solar names up. Those are continuing. I've had a, a tough time trying to play these solar names as of late. I've been just not taking a trade on them, but EMPH having another decent day today. It's starting to go a little bit higher. FSLR. Um, look we, there. Yeah, we, talked to, we, we talked about AI here. AI did take out that 2850 and look what happened. We continue to go to that 30 magnet, right? So a break of that 28.50 probably sends us to 30. We're only 60 cents away from that now. So decent move here on AI. Shout out Wally, Wally or W, um, or maybe it's both. Um, you guys had this on. Wow, someone here is a really good artist. All right, going to hold to a 10 anyway. cent risk here on Cleveland Cliff. Added at the 1821s. We'll hold towards the bottom right now on the low. Looking for the reversal. If not, we'll get stopped out. Uh, 
Um, House of Randy asking, didn't AMD get an upgrade? Yes. Uh, Wells Fargo uh, maintained an overweight rating and raised the price target to 120 yesterday. That was yesterday morning. Mm-hmm. So it's pro- it's likely still remember that price target raised was from 85 to 122. So they re- they had the same rating. Uh, they just raised the price target though. Maybe that's what's carrying it here today. Almost to that next resistance on the daily here for Unity, which is into the 3072s. Remember, I was looking for a bullish engulfing candle. That's looking good now. Now it just needs to close up to the top of the range on the day, and I could keep swinging on Unity. And then the bros, are you going to give me some coffee later, bros? Man, I, honestly, bros is not that bad. And I went to bro instead of the bros. Come on, bro is not I've bros. never had it. It's not bad at all. I, well, I, I, I think it's a good business thing. Honestly, if they weren't so limiting the franchises, I would open one up. They just, you have to like work there for like two or three years and then you can get a franchise. I was like, no, 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 no. That's too much for me. Yeah. I don't <laughs> right, Ryan? That was too much for me. Like if I could just open one up and just be like, you know, like general manager and then maybe like hire another manager and I could just come in in the morning, get my coffee, tell everybody to get to work and bounce out, you know, that kind of life. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the manage from a distance kind of life, lol? <laughs> lol. Just had to throw that in there. <laughs> oh no i mean I, I used to manage retail so I, I wouldn't mind doing it it's not a bad outlook i also looked at uh you know opening up a nice little cannabis lounge in detroit what happened uh no food and beverage you can't get a license oh it kills the it kills the idea of the business real quick bummer you know you got to make margins in that type of business so Oh, don't do that. I almost bought a Subway three years ago, so I had a bourbon drink instead. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that was a good save there on the Subway. You can get a steak and shake here. Nah, I'm, I'm good on that one too, man. That, that, that place is, uh, it's changed. It's not the same feeling anymore. They're like more digital now. They have like these like screens that you order off of. You don't even talk to anybody. And then all of a sudden your food just comes out. You got to pick it up. It's not like it used to be where, you know, the whole thing of a steak and shake was that I had at least a waiter come and kind of treat me. And it was kind of more of a fun experience. But I mean, hey. Buy butter chicken franchise. (laughs) I don't know about the butter chicken franchise. I could go for some Indian food, though, man. Maybe this weekend. (laughs) Maybe this weekend. When I get back home, I got an Indian place right by me that is to die for. I, I, I like Sal. He's like, yeah, I love this show, man. I'm learning a lot about trading. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Friday, guys. It's casual it Friday. Friday. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to it's say? It's Friday. I'm so excited. It's Friday, man. Uh, some, type of, some weeks I'm ready for the weekend. This week I'm ready for the weekend. Dude, we got final four games starting up again tomorrow. Right? Starbucks. Continuing higher technology. Now leading team. Hmm. Technology leading? No way. Software application names. Asana. What's up with Asana? Are we going to go up yet? Oh, we are having a good day there. Nice little day there for Asana. You know, what has been having a really nice time in software application is uh, some of these bigger names here. So I'm going to keep an eye on these. Software application names. Braze. Look at that little move. What is Braze? I don't even know if I know that one. <laughs> it's a $3 billion company, man. You got to know it. No, I don't. I'm just joking. No, I know. <laughs> There's too many that's companies a, But in there. that's on the relative volume scanner. It looks like it's rolling over here. I mean, there's some strong boys. Uh, Kingsoft earnings. Cloud okay, they, Holdings. They had, earnings. they had earnings. That's why. Compass. Nerdy. Compass is Compass Realty, right? Mm, I, I'm, I'm guessing. No, 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 it's not. It's not. It's that something. To, Compass Nerdy. Tech, yeah, that's something different. Sound. The Soundhound AI. All the AI names seem to be trading up in, in tandem here today. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Just running through some software names, team. This is how I find plays, team. I just look at what's up and I find. Let, let it tell me, right? Versus me kind of can be like, oh, this stock. Interest. Mm. Or, or is it pin interest? How do you say this? Pinterest. Pinterest, right? Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, we'll see what's going on with this one. It is trying to go a little bit higher than 2685s. Uh, that's like kind of the 15 minute move through that level. Daily level is bouncing back a little bit. That's also why you could see snap up a little bit there too, as it's bouncing back with pins. Um, it likes to move with it. How's Meta doing today? Meta's just hanging on, hanging on by a thread. All right, Unity doing well now. That's actually pushing higher. It got to that resistance level, the 72 level. So um, now just going to look to see if it can continue going higher, but it could pull back from here. I could just sell the position and take like, you know, 2%, then look to get back in it. I'm going to look for this just to continue working. This is going to be a swing position on Unity. Just wanted to just let it work. Let it work. We'll see what happens. Monday is another one that I know a lot of traders are looking at. So uh, we brought this one up with Christian from Hertz on Wednesday, Wednesday, Monday, kind of funny, uh, but we'll see if we get back up there on this one. This one is reversing right now. This is all for a uh, software application name. All right. It's about 10 30 team. Let's keep it up team. Let's get those likes out there. What else do you guys see? Buy a Wingstop franchise. That's just a whole bunch of frying. I don't think I can be around that franchise. <laughs> I can't handle all that fry, fry like just oil like everywhere. No, no, no. Yeah, it's no good. That's no good, man. That's like, no good. Yeah, like could, I could not handle that. EOSE from Noel, looking like it's about to break two fifty. Might go higher here on EOSE. Been a strong one, Noel. Good job on this swing. Gave this to us a couple go, of weeks ago. Here. Electronic components. Yeah, here. Let me show. I'm looking at the 15 right here, and this is mm. kind of what I got. So let's let's do some let's do some charting. Here. Oh, it's pretty. All right, two seven. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Noel, Noel, he had this one right. So it looks like we're actually breaking above that 250 here. Currently at 253, 271 going to be your next spot here on EOSC. Take a look at the daily chart here. Uh, looks like we are kind of broke out of this downtrend. Let's see if we can clean some of this past area up here. 271, big spot on 271 if we get there, by the way. Big spot. Yeah, and on the 15 minute, you got that rule of three there. You got a couple of temps there, and, and this is yep. why I like using the rule of three, team. I, I see it happen so often yep. that when you get a, a move up, Look for these moves to come down and kind of giving you that kind of ladder look. And why I like the ladder approach is that when you start thinking about it in this case, you can almost look for the pullbacks. And that's what I'm looking for as a trader, right? If I can ever get to the point where I'm looking for pullbacks, that gives me really good ability to some, do what? Not get caught on the, the like attempted rips, right? And so stocks have a tendency a lot of the times to coming up to levels where it's like kind of looking to give us breakouts and then you get a pullback. A lot of traders get caught on those wicks. They think it's the next breakout. Instead, I'm looking for the pullback. So then you see the volume flow there and then all of a sudden what? Boom, they get hit. Supply comes into the market, right? Look for the demand to come back in at the support. In this case, you can see around the 233s, 235 area was clear support in this stock. So as the stock is reapproaching those levels, especially after maybe like the second resistance try, you can even just start leveling in there. Maybe you see the, sec the second support try actually really hold there. Then you, when you see that third resistance, you're looking for pullbacks anywhere near that level to kind of risk off of. So in this case, you could have gone in on like the 235s, 237s. Even at the gates, you get a pullback to 237. That's above that trend line. I love going after these types of patterns. And this shows up in any type of stock. We're talking from 200 to $2 stocks. If it can show up in all the stocks, I definitely pay attention to it. And X is moving back up there. And um, now we're starting to get that move back towards the, the high there. But that's also why. Let's take a look at the SPY here, right? Let's take a look. 
What did we get? The bullish up moves through this pattern, right? We were looking yeah, at that. Spy looking strong. We drew yeah. this. Now look what do we see? That nice strength move, right? To 406. Let's see if we get another move. And 406 is pretty high, team. Look at look what we're heading. We're heading through this kind of trend line outlook here. And we're going towards, I would say, next stop, like for real bullish expansion, like front of four tens. We get to four tens. You're gonna have a lot of people saying, What about the banks? Mitch, so you're talking four tens. Take a look at this. I think you were getting your orange juice earlier. This is where I was setting up because I'm of the belief that SPY should actually be going down, but the market does what the market does. Trying to look at where the upside might be. Look at what I have charted right here, Mitch. I have <laughs> the I have the uptrend line, which is now mm -hmm. going to be resistance, literally intersecting with a 41068 price point. Mitch, I think you're spot on. I think 410 is probably the next spot that we stop here. Kevin saying SPY is going to 415s. 415s puts us what right in here. We get to 415. You're gonna have people yelling bull market. It's not bull market yet for me. That's yeah. 420, but still, we're really close to it. Mitch, you and you know Mitch loves his 420 price point. That's for sure. So I, I'll be yelling when we get to 420. All right, look at Unity go. I, I almost don't even want to look at it. some. These are times, Ryan. There's times when you have swing trades where I don't want to look at the unrealized, right? The unrealized makes me want to do what? Run, run to it, run to it. So it's 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 hard to see this one go a little bit higher, but now it's pushing higher towards almost 31, uh, up about 3% on this name. And so a lot of times in this market, 4%, it's like, man, should I just take it and run? But it, it's a nice little run there. Look at this move in unity. Ooh. That's a nice little that uplift. Is, that's a power move. That's a power lift there. It's hard not to just be like, click. <laughs> we'll see what happens, team. We'll see what happens. And I've been watching this one for a while, man. I I, I started seeing like uh, a lot of stocks, like growth stocks starting to take off. And I even saw um, my man Taken do the uh, call out on growth stocks. Um, he was talking about different names, but hey, you know how it is. Uh, once I hear the mention... He mentioned like Roku. That's having a really strong day. ARKK, you guys heard me mention it earlier on today, right? Really early. I started going to ARKK. Why? Because I was looking for growth names and names that, you know, were like dumped on because of high interest rates and worries of like spending and spending. Well, look at these stocks. That's a nice little up move. Yeah. And then look at the daily chart on ARKK. This is also starting to look a little bit strong. Yeah. I understand why people are looking at it. Me and too. It, and if this day closes up to the top of the range, you get another bullish engulfing look. And I'm not saying that that's going to be the, the, like it has to rip from there on, but we're just saying, yeah, there's definitely strength there. Tesla kind of leading the party, shop having a really nice move there. Um, Twilio having a nice little move here. Nice little move up. Roku, nice little bottoming around 61. Unity, we've already talked about that one. Um, what other big, big move here? Path. Look at path. P-A-T-H. I like this one. I like how it, it kind of gapped up, came back into some of that gap, and then now has really kind of pushed in the last three days. So that's not one that I trade often. It's a software name, but look at that hourly. I saw some strength there. Sure path. is. And I mean, Tesla, by the way, we know we were talking about Tesla. We take a look at mm -hmm. Tesla. This is just an intraday one minute chart. Um, these levels, again, these are levels that we've had drawn for a long time. You can see Tesla was literally holding that 195. We've actually cleared that out. So we went from 195 to 200 and that took out the 198 and the 199.50 or 199 and the 199.50. This was marked as a resistance area, not two different points, a resistance area. In fact, we can probably see where that was. Yep, that was right in here, back from the 22nd and 23rd of March uh, was that area. Now it looks like we're actually going to break above. That was 250 uh, $200.50. That too was on the 22nd of March. Uh, that was actually a double top going back to the 3rd of March. Tesla looks like it's going to take this out, folks. I mean, I think we probably go higher here on Tesla. Um, again, hard, hard for me to say just because my overall view of the market is, is negative or is bearish, but Tesla real strong here today. Cannot argue with what we're seeing in front of us. That's for sure. 
All right, team. So now I'm starting to limit my risk in X and limit my risk in Cleveland Cliff. So I actually know exactly, you know, I, I'm even bringing the stop up a little bit because it's been sideways now. And so what I have also on certain trades, it's kind of like an inner ticking time bomb where it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. Well, a lot of times I, it might mean just get out, right? Save myself some money. So I'm shortening down 26 tens. If I see that cut again, I'll just get out instead of 2608. It's just it's a slight little saving of some pennies sometimes can help me, especially when I have trades that are going in my favor right now, right? I do have some swings that can cover those losses easily. So always thinking about in here, kind of what matters to me more, right? And what matters to me more is being in the profits today. So that means cutting these trades that are not working for me on the day trading side, going with those swings that are working with me, well, that's what I like to do sometimes. Of course, this is my process. It doesn't have to be your process, but just so you guys can learn how I go about it. And it's hard when you're mixing, right? When you're mixing swings and, and day trading, sometimes I'm going to be like, well, I'm on point on the day trading side. Sometimes I'm going to be like, well, I'm on point in the swing trading side. So let's stick with that. that. Stick with what works. Yeah, it, it broke, helps you a lot. It, it yeah. helps you a lot, you know. Uh, Wisdom calling out a, a ticker here, Ion Q. Ion Q, yeah, of course, I, is the quantum that was computing. Strong I know all about this. I've interviewed uh, Nicolo Damasi uh, multiple times, and I've been reaching out to get him back on. We need to look at that. But this is a quantum computing play, um, and it's been ripping now. And I think this is all about AI, right? In the long run, yeah, I freaking absolutely think that, yeah, quantum computing is going to take over. But how long will that take, right? I mean, that's the hard part with this type of stock. And when it rides the momentum, yeah, I think you can ride the momentum. But also long term, how long will it take for it to really get back here towards, let's say, $10 and things like that? But nice little lift on the weeklies, pushing higher right now. I'd look for pullbacks probably like to like six, but that's just because it's already at 648, right? It's too extended for me. Got to look at where I could think reasonable price for entry for me would be. It would need to come back down to even $6. All right. Um, Kevin saying BB, BB is Godzilla today. Yeah, and I'm millions of fleeing Japanese because the <laughs> uh, I'm not in a BB. That that is ripping here. We're up fourteen, and that's pretty good for BlackBerry, right? Fourteen and a half percent here. I mean, just uh, what what it's it earnings, was just right? on earnings, right? Yeah. yeah so earnings. Next spot here, maybe four eighty five, maybe four eighty five. Who knows? Yeah, I, I see this kind of like body close 465 here on the daily. Kind of like that expansion moved last time. 465's next stop, then 480's. But I, I like to look for the body close first, but I can't blame you for looking at the 480 either. That's that's right after that. That's like 478, I think. 478, right? Right on the dot. This closed at 458, so it's actually slightly down. Oh, Shelly's it's a red, back. red candle, so boom. Let's see if we get through this 458. It kind of went right to it. That's that close on that daily candle here. So now you're getting through it. Now you're at 460s. Let's see if we can make that run there towards the next run is towards 478. Let's see if we make that run on BlackBerry. BlackBerry! YMAB, YMAB. We talked about this one earlier very, very briefly. Um, just taking a look, it did pop that high off and gave it. So, so here's the thing. This is what's crazy about this is that we've been saying how the range, range break trades have not been great to the upside. Well, we did get one. We, on these days that are strong, we're actually getting them. We got it here on YMAB, uh, YMAB. So nice little 50 cent move here through five on that break. Oh, it's hard for me to look at these oil names and not go after it, but I've been trying my best. You it's on the it, daily I believe in you. daily trend lines. The biggest thing for me is not to give up gains, right? So like altogether, I've made like, let's say like 15% on energy. I've given back about like a quarter of that 
in battling this last up move, right? And so you got to consider, is it worth it for me to come after this again? It is, but only in one case, right? And that's what I like to do. So I give myself like, okay, so what, what is the must happen for me to come back into this? The must happen is for WTI to crack 70 again. Where do you see it? You see it today up to 75 and higher. So what does that tell me? Stay away for now. Because if I'm not seeing oil break down, I'm definitely not going to be battling the oil names. When I was seeing oil break down, that's when I was battling and winning. When I saw oil start ramping back and I was battling it down, that's when I gave some back. That tells me, wait till I see that next downturn in oil, then I can come after these names. By the way, um, uh, we were talking about Lulu here. Wisdom is mentioning Lulu's in his green bucket. Uh, we talked about Lulu <laughs> quite. A, we talked about Lulu quite a bit after that earnings pop. And take a look at me. this. There you uh, go. Okay, take a look at this. So three seventy. I think we were talking about three seventy would have been that area to short it here if you wanted to buy puts. You'd be green on that trade here. Um, the pre market was the strength, right? A little bit of an overreaction up to three seventy seven there in the pre market. Three seventy held uh, right at the open. Uh, the next day, it looks like it tried to make a run towards three seventy. Couldn't even get there. I, again, kind of going back to the theme about the consumer weakening. $150 yoga pants might not be the top priority uh, right now, especially given everything else that's going on. I think Lulu actually looks pretty decent for a short here. Again, this is a company that I love, product that I love. Um, we talked about this. We talked about having a potential short on here, getting out of it for the earnings. They reported their Q4 earnings, so it's going to be one of their better quarters here. 370 has been the uh, decent sp uh, spot here to short that one. Looking at right now, playing a little bit of maybe Moderna here. I like how it's just going sideways here, right near the view app. It's an interesting play here. I'm getting a little bit of expansion on the bid side here. Just could look to see if I could get some fill down there, especially around like maybe 152.15. Risk would be 151.80s. It's about 50 cents or something like that. And then we're looking for an up move. The up move is pretty wide. It's up like two bucks. So just considering the risk to return, the risk to return makes sense for me. I'm going to take a shot here on this one. Going to get a starter here at 152.49. Look for pullbacks towards around like 152.20s to add. And then we'll take the shot towards that kind of like 151 90s here below it taking a shot here on moderna all right let's go to the spy here overall spy is pulling back a little bit i did just get an alert from target target look at that nice little up move in target today strong yeah and let's take a look at other uh in the same industry walmart having a decent day this is one that's been on my radar um daily candle nice little push up has been starting to push back here towards the 154. Costco for the 500 move is on my radar. Look at that one, Ryan. What do you think? Hmm, that's your, I that's mean, your baby. Yeah, Costco. I, I add on weakness, <laughs> man. Add on weakness. Uh, I think Costco inevitably is going to go higher here. Ollie. Add on weakness. Ollie. Ollie wants to go. We'll see. The only Ollie I see is when I'm playing Tarkov. I'm not, I'm not into the stock or the store. BJ, what about BJ? As it's been pulling back, that's this is held pretty no much comment. all the pullbacks. No comments. No comments. It's a wholesale, bro. Costco or nothing. Costco. Sound, or nothing. By the way, Soundhound AI. We're talking about some of those AI names. Soundhound AI uh, at highs here. Hmm. All right, team, in about 12 minutes, we'll be bringing you guys over to the All Access. Smash the like if you guys are enjoying the action out there today. We're taking some shots. That's all we can ever do, right? All right, Moderna now getting a little bit of a lift here. Well, as we get a little bit higher through kind of 153s, um, I'll be able to take a little bit of profit. Just kind of limit it. As we start going higher and higher, I'm just going to be taking like little little bits.
All right, 152.79, gonna look to like uh, like 153.10s. Just wanna take some off there and just keep letting this work. Unity working well, man, 31s now on Unity, up about 3.4. That's a tough one not to just run, because it's just just nice expansion move higher. Cleveland Cliff actually getting into yeah, the green now. I did see that. Uh, sorry, I, I'll throw your charts up here. I was, good, I, was looking at some worry. The, I was looking at some of the tech names. Jay was saying Microsoft's red here. Apple actually near flat. So we'll see if we re end up reversing here. Let's check a look. Take a look at the cues. And if you need to throw your charts up, you're, you're welcome. You're good, my friend. You're good. Q's still pushing higher here. Interesting. Yeah, that's where it gets interesting, right? I mean, uh, Shelly Shelly saying, why is BBBA, BBAI showing up on my radar? AI seems to be really strong today. Take a look at actual ticker yeah. AI, anything with AI attached to it. BBAI, SoundHound. There was another one I think in there. Uh, all seem to be all seem to be moving up here. Let's take a look and see where AI actually is. Yeah, we talked about AI being a 30 magnet, only 20 cents away now. Really, this break of 28.50 sending us to 30, that was a, that was a no-brainer right there. Italy is banning chat GPT over privacy, or is it just GPT? <laughs> All right, Shelly, you tell me. You tell me if the bank panic is over. Yeah, that's a hard one. Hey, Emmets, welcome. Hopefully you're having a good time. I believe that interview is, is that interview scheduled for All Access right after us, Mitch? Yes. There you go. You're looking at about 10 minutes there. I see, I don't think Aaron can hear me. Aaron, can you wave at me if you can hear me? No, not, no, oh, that's Aaron. I meant the other Aaron, Bree. Nope, Bree can't hear me. Okay, got to ask him about his Bio button. Largo. That's going to be oh, he needs his headset. He needs his headset. He needs it. Gotcha, gotcha. AT always got my back. AT, you the real dog. You real. He is, man. Moderna pulled back on me. See what the deal is with this one. See what wants to hold this pullback. It's a nice move. Just pull back real quick. All right, keeping an eye on the different position. Cleveland Cliff now going back to the red. So that one just doesn't look like it wants to go. Steels could be turning around. How's the market looking? Let's take a look. Spy was pushing Moderna. higher. Spy started pulling back a little bit. And B's trying to recover, baby. Microsoft going a little lower. Google pulling back here. Apple pulling back a little bit. Could give us a pullback to like those four or five fifties. We'll see what happens here. Uh, Square calls got bought, by the way. Square. Let's. Square's let's been see. doing well as of late. Sixty-seven and a half call. Wonder if that was a closing trade. The sixty-seven and a half call that expires May nineteenth. They bought twenty-three hundred of them. Spent one point eight four million dollars. Paid eight dollars a contract there on Square. 67 and a half. So those have been in the money calls by a little bit there. Interesting. 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 Hey, stay focused. Work on that golf game. I'm jelly, man. I am going to try and hit the range tomorrow. In fact, let me check what the weather is supposed to be like tomorrow because that I am trying to get some more swings in. Let's see. Oh, man. Oh, it's going to be rainy tomorrow. But Sunday, I should be able to get out on Sunday. Probably not tomorrow, but probably Sunday. 
All right. That's the plan. Good luck. Stay focused. Go low. When is BZ competition so I can bet on AT? Um, I don't know if we have it finalized yet, but uh, all jokes aside, AT is part of the defending champion team. So, Shelly, um, if you're going to bet on him, that's just one more reason for me to want to take him down this year because I know that it would cause you to lose that bet. I definitely want to do that. We'll see, though. We'll see. AT's team is strong. He's flexing over there. AT's team is strong. We'll see what we end up getting. That's awesome. All right. All right, Mitch, I think that's yeah, probably it for today. I, I'm probably going <laughs> to jump here for today. Um, we're going to be back at this again on Monday. Have a great day. Enjoy the interview with Conrad. Really looking forward to that. Um, stay green. Stay safe, everybody. Again, we might have some of these smaller caps that we talked about might uh, still present some opportunity here this afternoon. So if you're not working on your golf game, stay focused and uh, take a look at some of these names. Mitch, I will see you, my man. We'll be back here on Monday. Have a great weekend. Take care, everybody. All right. Market's still doing well. We'll look to see if it can continue pushing a little bit higher here. And, of course, we'll still see what happens. Like always, you guys can keep up with my action. Guys, give me a follow at MoneyMitchBZ, and we'll see. Do we still get a, another upside move here? It's been a really strong day here for these tech names. Qs overall, you can see, also gone higher. Let's go to the main charts here. Let's see if technology can continue to run. Well, we'll see this market kind of keep pushing higher. Financial services also pushing a little bit higher here today. So not seeing as much negative there as some would think. Uh, let's take a look at Bank of America now starting to come back. If these can go higher, yes, we could continue to climb higher. Look at JPM now pushing higher here. So I think if the banks show strength also, that's a good sign for the market. And of course, you guys already know technology is definitely strong here. Um, so we're going to be wrapping up here in just about a minute or two. I'll be getting out of here, but you guys like always stick around. We got a lot for you guys. All access coming up, of course, where we uncover stories in the next stocks. Um, we'll find out what happens here. Uh, if I can still get some of these up action move here. I uh, did get stopped out of the X position there on that pullback right now. Cleveland Cliff still in that one. So battling with Cleveland Cliff today. It was stronger earlier. We'll see if it gets back to the strength. The SPY trying to make a next move higher. Let's see if we can actually get that move. Tesla now to 201.81s. What a nice little reversal there in Tesla. And back to the 200s and pushing higher. We'll see if it can get back there towards even 214 where it turned around last time. SEDG coming back, some solar names, really having some strength on the day, so keep your eyes on those. Now, an ALGN, Align Tech, medical device stocks, getting a nice little lift there on that daily. Keep your eyes on that. We'll look to see if Moderna could come back here. Intel having a really nice day on that one. That's continued to strength, so keep your eyes, team. It's been a strong day in tech. We'll see if it continues to push. Uh, only things I see in the red right now, utilities and communication services. And that's from the open, not necessarily overall, because they're still in the green. All right. It's about 10.58. I'm going to start getting out of here. I will bring on my boy, AB. He's going to be taking over here. Let's go ahead. And what's up? What's up, my brother? How we doing? Oh, the old mute trick. No worries. We'll get you going in a second here. I'm sure that probably the mic's off there. Not a worry. All right. There we go. I got there you, There we my go. Friend. Happy no Friday. Worries. It's 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 a, it's a rainy Friday here in Detroit. You can see rainy. outside. It's a little dark, but hey, you know, doesn't matter. It's Friday. The markets are up. That's that's the good news. And we're about to bring you a couple of great companies here on our all access programming. Uh, Mitch, thanks for carrying that that live trading great stream today, as always. Yeah, as always. I'll see you next time. Enjoy the story. I heard everyone asking in the chat, where's Conrad? Where's Conrad? Well, guess what, team? No more waiting. He's coming on right now.
Hell yeah. All right. Well, first off, we've got ESC Entertainment going to hop on. I've got my man Conrad hanging out back backstage. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring Conrad on the stream and we'll learn a little bit more about ESC and a very uh, interesting company in the esports space. Hello, Conrad. How are you doing? Happy Friday. Welcome to Benzinga's All Access. Happy Friday. That was fun watching Mitch chat about the green tech stocks. A great way to start the Friday. Yeah, I know. It's, it's almost been weird these past couple of weeks where the market's been up. It's like, a whole, well, I'm not used to this. I'm used to seeing like red over for the past year and a half. I don't know what's going on. It's like some bizarro world where the, the Fed's still raising interest rates, but stocks are still up. But hey, I'll take it. You know, I'll, I'll take it. So will I, man. It's nice to see him back in the green. All right, so Conrad, before we get going, do you mind just giving us a brief audience? Because I know we've got a lot of members in the in the uh, audience that are familiar with, uh, you know, ESC Entertainment. But for for those who aren't, do you mind just giving us a brief overview of what the company is, uh, what the company is, and what you guys do? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we've really simplified the story for everyone. Um, very simply, what we do is we make your game a success. And how do we do that? We leverage our proprietary technology and big data to acquire new users to existing video games and gaming platforms. So, for example, when you release a new game and you want to drive abundance of eyeballs and get new users onto that game, that's what we do, right? You hire ESE to get that done for you. Got it. Um, so it looks like revenue and gross profits have been growing quarter after quarter. What do you what do you attribute this success to? I mean, you know, it's some impressive growth. So so how have you guys achieved that growth? It was strategic from day one. Uh, we aligned ourselves with the largest groups in the sector. You know, Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, Riot Games, all the biggest gaming publishers in the world. We work directly with them. We have partnerships with them. And that was our strategy. If we align ourselves with the biggest players in the industry, uh, we're going to have similar success. Yeah, and so uh, um, what, what does that look like going forward? I mean, is it continuing those partnerships with the big players? Is it adding more partners? What what, what do you guys do to continue that sex success moving forward? Yeah, we want to continue to nurture those partnerships and expand with those existing partners over the long term to create that sustainability. And then in addition to that, you know, there's thousands of gaming publishers around the world. That's the upside for us, right? We have over 50 existing clients, but look at the scale. We could go up to, you know, three, 4,000 gaming publishers around the world. So it's really exciting for us and it's a total green field. Got it. And then, so I know that recently you guys announced a, uh, you know, that you sold two subsidiaries for more than 40 million. And from what I understand that, that, is more than the entire market cap of the ESC company. I mean, how does, uh, how much do those units represent and, and like, how does that work with the valuation? Yeah, you know, those two business units represent roughly 17% of the revenue. Uh, so as you can imagine, not only is it double the market cap, but it's also representative of about 17% uh, of the revenue. So. You know, everyone knows how to do simple math. Uh, it imputes a very strong overall valuation uh, that is not reflective of our share price. So it's really exciting uh, that people outside of the company are making offers like that, uh, which really sets a new standard for what our assets are worth and furthermore, unlocking the value of the entire company. So shareholders should be extremely happy uh, that shows uh, that you made the right choice by investing in ESE. Got it. That makes sense. Um, and then so ESC has become a global leader in technology and service for video game developers. Uh, which of these services has been the most significant contributor to your growth? And what new offerings can we anticipate in the future? Yeah, the one that really stands out, uh, every game developer's KPI is acquiring new users. And that's what we specialize in, right? So that's going to be the core focus moving forward is leveraging that proprietary technology to continue to drive new users to video games. Uh, that's what everyone wants. 
Uh, and, you know, that's what we're going to do moving forward. Got it. And then so as far as the actual games, I mean, is it, you, you know, you mentioned how many newer gaming uh, publishers there are and developers popping up and stuff like are there any are, are there any big household names that we know, like any like Fortnite's Call of Duties that you guys have worked with? Or is it more these smaller games that you guys are trying to help get off the get off the ground? Oh, no, we work with the Giants. I mean, League of Legends, Valorant, you know, Roblox uh, all the way down the line. I mean, we work with the the coolest, funnest, uh, biggest games in the world. So it's super exciting, but we're also open to working, you know, with smaller groups as well and helping them develop their user base uh, and develop their games as well. So it's super cool because we get to be a part of the journey all the way up as they build that game to becoming a big success. Yeah. So Conrad, what are the what are the company's uh, key initiatives or objectives for the next year and how will these objectives help you guys, you know, continue that growth that we've seen on the uh, on the earnings for the past, uh, you know, few quarters? Continue to unlock that value, right? We've created a tremendous amount of value over the last couple of years. We've executed at the highest level. We've hit all our targets. Um, so what we want to do is continue to do the same. If it's not broken, why, you know, you got to keep pressing forward, continue to do the same types of things, you know, announcing that LOI. We're making statements and bold statements of what we think the company's worth. Uh, and it's fantastic. I mean, we need to continue down this path be consistent and we're going to can see that consistent growth moving forward. Got it. Um, ESC's financial position appears to be strong. Can you discuss how this stability will benefit both the company and its shareholders in the, in the long term? Yeah. Once again, consistency, executing sustainability fundamentals. These are all words I've been using since day one. Uh, and now in a little bit more of a difficult market, this is where we shine. Uh, and this is where we're going to leverage all of those things moving forward. So one thing that I find really interesting about ESC and, the, and, and of course, the space you're in is just, I mean, gaming has just been on this growth path since, I don't know, I mean, when video games were first introduced in like the, you know, 80s or 90s, it's just been steadily growing. COVID, obviously, we saw this huge spike up where people were gaming a lot more than ever before because everyone was stuck at home. And then after COVID, that growth has kind of slowed a little bit, but it's still there. I mean, can you just speak to the total overall industry and the growth opportunity there? Like, how, like do you expect gaming to, to continue to grow at the pace? Do you expect it to kind of plateau or slow down at any point? No, I think that's a really good point. It also put a lot of eyeballs onto gaming. So it unearthed a lot of new gamers or people interested in the space. Now, as it pertains to gaming by and large, I think it's going to continue to grow um, year over year. Uh, that's what the statistics show. Uh, but the interesting part is when you have something new like esports, that has a huge upside. I mean, it's like a brand new industry in itself. So that always pushes up the whole industry uh, in an upward fashion. So it's it's really exciting. I think we haven't even scratched the surface moving forward. Uh, and it's just exciting uh, moving forward kind of to see where this goes in general. I, I think the integration of gaming into music, traditional sports and entertainment by and large uh, is going to continue. And I think it's going to accelerate. Got it. And then lastly, where where can people find out more about the company? I mean, I'm sure we've got a lot of people here in the audience that might be a little bit interested now. Maybe some of them are gamers themselves and they're thinking, OK, I want to I want to be able to get invested in, uh, you know, in, into this somehow. Yeah, of course. I mean, the best way go to esegaming.com. And then our ticker symbol, uh, TSXV ESE. And then if, uh, if you're on the U.S. side, OTCQX, the ticker is ENTEF. Uh, but we're super active with news. We love doing interviews. So I uh, would love, you know, just come check us out. And uh, we're always active. So there's always new stuff happening. Awesome. Well, Conrad, thank you again for joining Benzinga today. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure to talk about one of my favorite industries, the video game industry. I, I, I hope we get to talk to you again soon. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday and have a great weekend. Fantastic. Hopefully you become a shareholder after this. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say whether or not I will be, but I'll, I'll let you know privately if I do. I love it, man. Have a great weekend, guys. Thanks. For All right, you too, Conrad. We'll, we'll, we'll chat soon. Thank you.
All righty, guys, that was ESE Entertainment. The tickers are on the top of the screen. Of course, in the U.S., that will be on the OTC markets, E-N-T-E-F. Or if you're in Canada, it is just E-S-E, easy enough. Um, all right, guys, we're going to keep it ticking. That was the first company we're talking to. I've got another very exciting one hanging out backstage, Bio Largo. We've got Dennis Calvert, the president and CEO. Uh, ticker there is BLGO, and I think let's just go ahead and get right into it. So without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Calvert onto the stream and talk some some biotech. Yeah. All right, Dennis Calvert, welcome to the stream. Hey. How are you doing on this Friday? Awesome, Aaron. Good to be here. Well, good to have you. All right, so before we get started, can you just give us a quick rundown of what BioLargo is and what you guys do? Yeah, so we call ourselves an innovator and solution provider, focused on some of the biggest challenges that place, face the planet, solving problems with technology and engineering, and really bringing those through a series of relationships, whether partnership, direct to market, spin outs. I mean, it's a really interesting company with over 15 years of R&D behind it. And now we're experiencing two pretty significant uh, growth uh, opportunities that are catalysts for moving the company forward. It's really, it's a great, exciting time for the company. Yeah. So one thing I'm curious about, and especially at companies in this space is like, how are you guys structured as a business? Like, where does the money, where, where do you guys make, make your money? Well, it's right. So we've got a, a couple of different ways to do that. One is the first in innovation, which is a um, chemistry complex that has created spawned the creation of really four segments, uh, excuse me, two se three segments of two companies, uh, is has an odor control and VOC com component that has an industrial side and a consumer side. It also helps spawn the creation of a medical company. And in all those situations, what we've done is taken technology to create the basis of a company. And then we recruit management with expertise in the space or we grow it. We find our first commercial adoption. And then the strategy really is to partner through channel partners and through rep agencies, of course, to develop national distribution or international distribution to grow the business with a keen eye on getting that first market adoption. That's the hardest thing for an innovator to do is to invent it, prove it up, find that first market adoption. We've got a similar thing going on with PFOS, and that's where we're working with very sophisticated engineers, 30 years in the field that we acquired and brought together uh, into the company as a subsidiary about four years ago now. And they're finding traction also. So again, think about that. There's a parent company that's financed all these. There's operating units that hold the exclusive rights to technology assets, dedicated staff, and then growing through partnerships around around mostly the United States, but of course internationally as well. Got it. That's all. I, I love when companies have kind of those different revenue streams, different ways to make. I like uh, it. Money you know, it's so hard, right? Especially as an innovator. Find, you know, look, they're all everything we have in the portfolio. We have eight technologies. Everything in the portfolio is really awesome in some way. That doesn't mean it's easy to get commercial, but it is awesome. And so the idea is with the diversity, when one's hitting and others not, you can find your way through that adoption cycle. And we've sustained ourselves long enough to now witness the significant cash flow and um, marginal cash contribution to operations really with just even one product can take us to profitability. And we have probably 40 products and eight technologies. So this is a moment where we're seeing the fruit of those investments really bear out in a significant way. And of course, behind the behind the curtain in the portfolio, there's dozens more to come. So it's pretty awesome. Well, I mean, well, you mentioned the product. So let's talk about one. And sure. this one I love the name of. I want to talk about the Poof product and Poof. what it is. Poof. And, and what makes it so uh, so powerful? Yeah, so this is a great story. And, it, and for the company, it's a full circle story. OK, full circle. Oh, my goodness. When we started the business years ago, we acquired a technology. We became BioLargo and we at first focused on licensing and we had a whole bunch of licensing deals on the table. I mean, a ton. Right. Big, big partnerships. And then the housing crisis hits. Oh, my goodness. And so we found ourselves in a spot with great technology and, and no way to distribute it, no way to to get it into the market. So we went vertical. And as we went vertical, we went in, into the industrial odor and VOC controlled market and have become a leader in that space. Gritty market, hard work. OK, but we we earned our stripes, as they say. Right. 
So about uh, two years ago, a group came to us from Ikigai Marketing, uh, holding Ikigai Marketing Group, which is now Poof, right? So Poof. And they came to us and said, you know, we think you got a billion dollar product in the making. And we said, well, we do too. We, we know it to be and believe it to be the number one technical performer in eliminating uh, odor. Okay. So they said, well, we want to do a deal with you. And we said, great, let's do a deal. And so we partnered. And so we're the supply chain partner. Uh, we partner with Poof where we sell them wholesale product. They then retail it and distribute it through their marketing campaigns. We get a small uh, margin on, on production and we get a royalty and we bargain to participate in the eventual exit for 20% of the equity of Poof. Okay. So what does that mean? We got married. We're partners. And now what have they done? Well, in a year, they're pushing a run rate of, of well over 3 million a month, pushing 4 million a month. Uh, they, they first launched direct to, direct to consumers. They then picked up Walmart and went through a test with Walmart, knocked out the numbers. Now they're rolling out nationwide in Q2 2023. So mark the date. That's Q2. That's it right now. Okay. Or, I mean, well, right? tomorrow. Exactly. Right. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, um, you know, what's happened is their, their skill is extraordinary at being able to tell a story that creates a compelling reason for people to recognize the value proposition. And really it centers on number one, it works. I mean, it really works in, in breaking down compounds that cause orders, so odor. So it's a, it's a breakdown technology. It's number one. Number two is safety, safe for the people, pets and the planet. And they're leveraging those claims in such a significant and brilliant way as to drive volume. So we're watching our numbers climb. And, and again, I just want to point out, this is one product in a portfolio one technology in our portfolio, and this one product is taking the company to, to on its way to positive cash flow and eventually on its way to profit. One, just one, and we have a whole portfolio. So it's it's pretty awesome. And, I, and we want to tell everybody, go to poof.com, P-O-O-P-H.com. You've probably already seen the infomercial on because it's, it's broadcasting all over national te television. Yeah, I think we've got a video queued up right here, so let's go ahead and pop that up. Do we have sound? I don't know if we're getting the sound for it, but uh Okay, I'll tell it to you. This is poof. <laughs> this is how it goes. <laughs> Save for people, pets of the planet, right? And it goes through this inform in this uh, infomercial to drive compelling value, right? It even shows the the owners using it uh, on claws on the pet for eye odor and and skin folds and ears, you know, safe, safe, safe. And of course, it's instant. Uh, breakdown of odorous compounds. This describes our journey in the industrial side. And again, we mentioned full circle. So what does that mean? That means in this case, we did all the work, safety, efficacy, manufacturing, labeling, regulatory. I mean, all the things that go into creating a product that has a chance to go to a, an international billion dollar brand level. So the business model is pretty basic. And that is we start where we are, we're the supply chain partner. We're partners in their eventual exit. And the goal is to get this launched into the marketplace and then probably sell it to one of the global giant branders who will then take it from a hundred million to a billion. I mean, that's the way it works, right? And this is a great example of how our company can leverage our technology and our investment to get that product to a position, which by the way, is over eight years of work on just that product. I mean, it's an incredible amount of work. Wow. But what it did for this partnership is it gave our partner who knows how to create that brand and set up international national and international distribution. It gave them the tools to immediately hit the market. When we first launched, you know, they literally started selling in about 90 to 120 days, testing, testing, testing. And then once they refined it, they then launched, launched and started blowing out the numbers. So it's pretty it's a great example of the business model for Biolargo where we can leverage these technical assets through partnership for big numbers. Yeah, that's what's so interesting. I mean, about, you know, I think like business in general is there's a lot of a lot of people and companies out there that want to be the next Apple and invent, you know, whatever. But like oftentimes if you just make a product that does its job and you execute on it and there's improvement, uh, uh, you know, versus what's available out there on the market right now, like if this right. works better and is safer than other odor eliminate, uh, you know, eliminizers that are out on the market right it's now, then like that in itself is a is is a successful business it doesn't have to be you know the next apple or or whatever
Well, and in the portfolio, what you want to do. So I agree with that, by the way. And, and the idea is that we have a whole series of these product opportunities in the portfolio. It's not just one. We're the inventor. You know, we're the science and engineering group that figured out how to do this. And so how do you how does that company, a small company, you know, with all this smart talent, go out and change the world? Well, you do it a little bit at a time. You do it every day. And then eventually you find your partnerships. So so we consider ourselves more of the innovator that can go, turn into a full service solution in the field for environmental remediation, for example. That leads us to the PFAS. But but within the portfolio, we're, we're always inventing. In fact, every week we have we have people join us. And they say, I've never seen a company like this. I said, why? Every week we're on the phone innovating for the next solution in our portfolio and thinking about how do we position this in the marketplace for broad, broad adoption. And so that is the business. That's what we do. And of course, it's focused on all things sustainable. So it's pretty cool. But we should talk about PFAS real quick, though. You know about PFAS? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I, I, I was you mentioned it. So that was going to be my next question because I know there's some you know, regulatory stuff going on there. But I mean, a lot of us might not know what PFAS is. So can you just give us the background there before we get into the details? See, sure. PFAS, PFAS. PFAS is a, is a, is a term that refers to a class of chemicals. It's, I think it's over 900 now or something. It's a big old number. PFAS is fluorinated compounds per and polyfluoroalkyl per and polyfluoroalkyl. They're fluorine compounds. They have, a, they have a strong carbon bond. Basically, it's the chemistry that was used to create nonstick coatings. That's the simple version. It's more than that, but simple version. Nonstick coatings. They were sold for over 40 years, okay? And it turns out uh, they were created to withstand the natural degradation of nature. It means they don't break down. They last forever. Well, stuff that lasts forever is not good. As, as, as our core inventor, Ken Code, said, you know, there's a natural, there's a natural cycle for everything. Stuff that lasts forever, not good. Not good. Not good. No. And so in, in small quantities, it turns out it's linked to cancer and birth defects. Okay, so PFAS is all over the news. Just just do an internet search, PFAS. You'll, you'll see it ever, everywhere. Litigation going on all over the world. It's been targeted by the Biden administration, of course. The EPA is coming out. They just published their testing limits for water. Wait, and real, real quick. If I go out right now to Target and buy a nonstick pan, does it have PFAS, PFAS in it, or they, they change the way they produce it? Well, so the, the obvious ones, they've been changing over time to different chemistries uh, that do the same thing that are now considered safe. Okay, so, uh, but but here's the reality. It, it permeates the world. It's in, it's in packaging. It's in cosmetics. PFAS is used to make pesticides. It, it pretty much, when you're talking about the testing limit at four parts per trillion, which is like two grains of sand in multiple Olympic swimming pools. I mean, you're talking about such a minute quantity is now considered not safe. It's when you test at that level, you find it everywhere. It's in mother's breast milk. It's in the polar ice caps. It's in the rain cycle. And, and it, it migrates with water. And so in particular, drinking water has become under uh, extraordinary scrutiny. So everybody in the water business is in a scramble. Oh, my goodness. What are we going to do? Food. Listen, and the next ones to come are food processing, food production, you're eating it, right? You don't need to be eating things with PFAS in it. It's just not good. Okay, so so there's this huge opportunity. At first, people are saying it's like a sixty billion. It sounds ridiculous, but people talk about it being a trillion dollar market now. And the reason is because it's gone down to such a low level of testing. So the EPA just came out with its new regs, saying that they were going to set the testing limit at four parts per trillion. That means super minute quantities means that if you have super minute quantities at four parts per trillion or greater, you have to clean it up. You have to clean it up, okay? And so people are scrambling because there's no techno good, technically good solution. The incumbent technologies are unable to meet that threshold. So we have a device called the AEC that's, that processes water and strips out the PFAS. Uh, like like um, with an electromagnetic field, it's awesome. Comes across a membrane, collects it like flypaper and, and gets selective extraction. Well, we've done about 10 trials. We have our first customer, and it's a big one. It's a it's a big industrial customer. Uh, it'll take years, right? It'll take a couple of years to get to full installation. And then it'll run for probably 10 years to clean it up. I mean, these are massive remediation projects. We also have set up national distribution. We got like 38 reps. We're we're now experts being speaking all over the country. Uh, the backlog is massive, right? And so we're in it to win it with with what a technology that can perform at a level of non-detection, non-detection. That's a science word that means we took it all out. 
right? Yeah. Below the level at which science could detect it. So anyway, PFAS is a big deal in the portfolio. We've got about three years of R&D work now going commercial, and it's just opened up the door of opportunity so wide. I can't, I can't even express it well. <laughs> So. Yeah, like you said, that market opportunity is just a- absolutely insane. Well, uh, Dennis, this has been a great conversation. I've learned a lot about uh, you know the clean tech space. Do you have any like hot tech uh, hot takes for what you think is going to happen in the in the industry over the next few years? Well, sure. And then uh, you know we just acquired a battery technology. It's worth a mention. Uh, it's a fascinating opportunity was presented to us where a team had developed this battery tech over the course of five to eight years. Uh, and they came to us and said, we've got this great opportunity. Can you help us get it through the commercial adoption stage? And we're like, oh, my goodness. And so all of these things really focus on clean, safe for the planet, pe- good for people, good for the planet, good for commerce. That's a sustainable strategy, air, water and earth, making products. So for us, yeah, it's really simple. You're, we're watching. Um, we had 125 plus percent growth year over year. It's that pace is continuing. We've already made public announcement that Q1 will be at least 50 percent over Q4. It's huge. And so what we're seeing now is with the rising up of revenue, almost no debt, no, no toxic debt, no convertibles. We're, we're watching the net losses fall dramatically and the opportunity to start actually making money right before us. It's right before us. And so as those numbers climb, we're going to show the world how we make money on our technology, which is taking a long time. A lot of money, a lot of investment. So this is a breakout year. There's no question. And so I hope people will do a deep dive to learn about the company. Reach out to us, right? Biolargo.com. We have a blog that we post all the archive information. We produce a lot of content. It's worth a, it's worth a look. Yeah. And again, uh, yeah, that, that battery acquisition seems interesting for sure. I think you guys are doing some really cool things. The, the company is exciting. I'm excited for us to get some poof delivered here in the office because I think that Ooh. might... It might, uh, uh, quicken up my mor- <laughs> that and also quicken up my morning routine. I won't have to take full showers anymore. I'll just, I'll just give myself a little poof and I'll be good to go for the day. You and your dog. It'll be perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, Dennis, again, uh, thank you for coming on Benzinga and sharing more about bio Largo. Definitely uh, been a great conversation and I've learned a lot. So we're going to go ahead and we drop that link in the chat to poof.com. Again, it's available on Amazon, uh, yeah. but, but I hope we get to chat again soon. Thanks, Aaron. Great day. You too, and have a good weekend. All righty, y'all. That was Dennis Calvert from Bio Largo. Again, the ticker's up on the stream. B L G O. If you want to go check that out, or go to poof.com to check out some of that product. I mean, if you guys have pets out there, you know it's like sometimes hard to just manage all the different odors and whatnot that's associated with having pets. And then you don't you don't want to be spraying some you know, aerosols that got all these different chemicals, especially in the presence of your pets or yourself or your kids or whatever in your home. So I definitely think, uh, you know, products like Poof are going to be around for the future that are a little bit cleaner, a little bit more organic, uh, that are able to still, you know, get the job done. Because I think that's the thing with a lot of organic cleaning supplies is that people buy them and then they'll, you know, like, oh, this organic dish soap or whatever. Then they'll find that it doesn't work as well as the Dawn. But that's not the case with poof. So, you you know, I would just say try it out. And then if it if you find it doesn't, you know, work for you, then then whatever. Then you then you, you, you move on. Um, but let's see. So we've got a few things. So I've got we didn't get to do a show yesterday because of our, our quarterly meeting. So I had a few guests that were planned that didn't get to come on yesterday. So they might. Be hopping on with us today. I'm waiting to hear back from them right now. So I'll go ahead and pull up my Benzinga Pro. We'll talk about the markets for a few minutes. Um, and and producer AT, if you want, we can switch. Oh, you were one step ahead of me. I was going to say, if you want to switch the branding to Benzinga Live, we can. But he was already doing it. Um, that's awesome. But um, I honestly don't know because it's like Friday afternoon, I think, for some of these people now based out in, in Europe and whatnot. So, like, I don't know. I might get the hits back that we're, we're getting the guests that are going to be hopping in with us. If not, we'll just talk about, uh, you know, I can talk about, all right. So actually I'm kind of pissed off. So yesterday I had, it was MLB opening day. I had a seven leg same game parlay on the Cardinals game. Okay. So it was for like five different players to get a hit one player to hit a home run for there to be a run scored in the first inning. So that's like kind of a fun little baseball bet that's available for every game is you can bet 
that there either will be or won't be a run scored in the first inning. So I had that there would be a bet in the first inning. Uh, Jordan Walker to get a hit, Tommy Edmond to get a hit, Nolan Gorman to get a hit, like all these guys to get a hit. All right, basically, every single thing in the bet, six out of seven legs, hit in the first three innings. Every single person I needed to get a hit, they got a hit. Every, the person who I needed to hit a home run, hit a home run. There was a run scored in the first inning. The seventh leg of it was just the Cardinals to win the game. It was a $25 bet to win more than $2,000. So I was sitting there. My friends were telling me, like, Hed hedge it. Basically, bet a little bit of money on the Blue Jays. And then that way, say you bet $500 on the Blue Jays money line and it's even money, then you could guarantee you that you're going to win at least $500 on a $25 bet. I didn't do it. Because I was like, nah, Cardinals got this. We're going to come back and win the game. Cardinals come back, take the lead 8-7 in the eighth inning. So all we needed to do, all our closer needed to do was get three outs, and I would have won more than $2,000. First of all, it actually would have been more than $2,000 because I had other bets that were just on the Cardinals' money line and like the over in the game. Um, and I didn't do it. At that point, in hindsight, in retrospect, is when I really should have hedged it because at that point, when the Cardinals took the lead in the bottom of the eighth inning, the Blue Jays were probably like plus 250 or like plus 300. So I could have placed like $200 on them to win like 700 and been like, okay, if I, you know, at least if I, if the Cardinals lose and I don't win my two grand, I'll still win like 500. Didn't do it. Lost everything I have. The let me, I'll pull up the bet to, to read you exactly what it was because it was just frustrating because it was such a good. I mean, like same game parlays are like so hard, especially once you start getting more than five legs. Like to get all those things right is actually like really hard to do. So it was frustrating doing that, um, and not not taking any money away. But all right, so I'll read you the the whole bet. All right, it was plus eight thousand. All right. Uh, I don't know if well, you probably won't be able to see it, but all right. We have St. Louis Cardinals money line. That did not hit. Brendan Donovan to get a hit. Yes. Jordan Walker to get a hit. Yes. Nolan Gorman to get a hit. Yes. Tommy Edmond to get a hit. Yes. Tyler O'Neill to hit a home run. Yes. Over half a run in the first inning. Yes. So again, six out of the seven legs hit in the first three innings. I mean, I don't think I'll ever be able to, to make a same game parlay that, uh, that great. And then I also had... Cardinals money line parlayed with the over that was a hundred dollars to win 272 so to get 372 total back and then Cardinals money line minus 105 another hundred dollars on that so all in all I went from potentially winning like twenty five hundred dollars on the game to losing like 250 so that was cool that was fun um but on the bright side on the bright side I've made up Everything that I lost yesterday on a baseball game and more trading in the markets had some spy calls today that I sold most of. Um, I was holding about 15 spy calls earlier today. Now I'm down to seven. As you can see, I also have some Baba calls that are worth a whopping six dollars now. So the Baba calls are dead, um, but my spy calls are still alive. Um, I basically, since I sold most of them, I'm going to just kind of let these ride in case we get some, like, huge afternoon rally just because, I don't know, it seems like people are feeling a little bit more ease at the market. I mean, the market's up to uh, more than 2% the past week. You look at it past three months, up nearly 6%. So, I don't know. I'm, I've, been, I've been a fan of the SPY. I've been a fan of, uh, you know, buying the dips here because, again, if you think back to a couple weeks ago, the whole reason the market went down as low as it did was the, were these, like, banking fears, which I got on here. You know, I brought Tim Melvin on, and I was saying the whole time, like, I think these this is way overblown. And, I mean, honestly, like, look. Look at, I mean, the XLF. And, and we can look at the KLE or, or the KRE or whatever, too, for the regional banking one. I mean, look, the KRE is down... 28% the past month. Your XLF is down 10% the last month. These things are still trading at a discount. And I'm not saying, okay, there's not, uh, you know, any problems in the banking industry because I think that's, that's it's it's fair to say that there are some problems out there. But, I mean, look at the bar, look at XLF. Look at the, the, the major fund, uh, uh, you know, the major spider fund for, for financial names. 
It's down 10% in the month. Like, if the whole banking system was truly collapsing, don't you think it'd be a little bit worse than that? Don't you think that it wouldn't just be, okay, we're going to be trading sideways for the next three weeks? And we've already seen the the deposits, you know, the, the bank runs, essentially, that people were worried about slow down to, to uh, essentially a halt. So if I'm not worried about the banking... Um, if I'm not, if I'm not work, uh, you know, worried about the banking industry, and that's the exact reason why the market went down five percent a few weeks ago, then like common sense should say, okay, well, if the banking sector's fine, then, and that's the reason that it went down, then it should also be the reason that it comes back up. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been bullish here. I've been more bullish than I think the average person throughout the past like six months or so. What I will say is that in our high interest rate environment right now, I don't think we're going to see any like absolutely crazy runs. Like I'm holding spy calls today, hoping we get up to like 408 or something by the end of the day. But do I think spy is going to be running to, you know, 430 again anytime soon? No, probably not. Just because I think back here, you know, a lot of people when, when we did get up there in August of 2022, a lot of people thought we wouldn't have to end up uh, bringing interest rates as high. Or we wouldn't even be able to. And what you have to consider with the, you know, I think there are a lot of people out there that are kind of bearish right now or expecting a big downturn and essentially saying how, I mean, like interest rates are keep going up. Like, you know, the stocks can't keep going up. And there's truth to that. There's truth that you don't want to be fighting the Fed, uh, you know, et cetera. But the flip side to that that you got that you have to realize is that one of two things is going to happen. And uh, it's probably not this simple, but here's the way I see it. This is like the most likely two scenarios. If interest rates do move higher than the, from where they're at right now, it is because A, inflation has remained strong, which also means the economy is still strong. The economy is hot. So you could be out there saying, okay, I want to short stocks because interest rates are going to go up. But then someone else could be sitting there saying, okay, I want to buy stocks because the economy has been so strong that we that, 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 that the, the American economy has been so resilient that despite interest rate hikes, uh, you know, the, the economy is remaining hot, employment numbers are looking good, and inflation is rising. Or B... The economy's not so hot anymore that 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 unemployment starts going up. And then that would mean that the Fed wouldn't be able to raise interest rates either more. So basically what I'm saying is I think there's a way you can kind of put a bullish spin on it either way, saying, OK, yeah, the Fed's raising interest rates. But you know why? Because the American economy is so strong, because these companies are still killing it, because there's still inflation out there. So to me, that wouldn't even necessarily be a reason to get short. It'd be more of a reason to say like, okay, I'm not going to think the market's going to hit new all-time highs if we continue to raise interest rates. Um, I do think... I do think we're going to have Steve Collation join us here in a few minutes. Let's see. All right, so we will have... Um... We will have Steve Collation join us in a few minutes, so that'll be fun. And then, um, oh, sorry, I need to blow my nose. We will have uh, Christian Angermeyer on in a little bit as well, talking about a new investment that he made. All right, looks like spies starting to leak a little bit here. My my spy my my spy calls are coming down a little bit, but like I said, I mean, I I got out of most of them, so I'm happy with. That, that timing that I sold them on, which I usually don't. That's usually my biggest problem as a trader is I'll, I'll, I'll invest in some of these things, make a lot of money on them, and then not sell them. And then that's kind of what I did yesterday with the sports bet. Like I could have easily taken a free 500 or or $1,000, but I wanted to... See, the problem with that, though, is if I bet, say, four or $500 on the Blue Jays to win, I hedge my bet, and then the Cardinals end up winning... 
then instead of winning two thousand dollars, I'm only winning like fifteen hundred, which I understand is like in, in in hindsight a silly way to look at it because at least I would have made money. I right, wait. I'm gonna leave up this um spy chart for like eight seconds while I go. Just watch this number right here. If it if this number right here that I've highlighted four oh six eighty, if that drops below four oh six fifty. Just start spamming the chat for me to sell my calls so I don't I don't lose all my money. Oh wait, it's not it doesn't stay highlighted when the number moves. But all right, we're moving up. That's uh I, I think the good direction that we want to be moving while I'm holding calls. So I want that to keep moving up a little bit. But all right, just give me eight seconds. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, and I didn't have to sell. It looks like the the it did not get below 406.50. I feel a million times better. I probably sound better too. I'm dealing with it's allergy season, you know. I haven't started taking my my daily Zyrtec yet, but maybe it's time. Um, imagine banks charge you a penalty to withdraw your money. I think some do, or not not for like personal bank, but for like corporate. I don't know. Uh-oh, we're starting to leak more. See, this is what, I mean, it's tough, it's tough trading, like, spy on a day where it's, like, running like this, because so quickly, people will start taking profits and essentially just, like, you know, spy will drop, like, a quarter, like, very quickly, and then, like, next thing you know, your calls are down 20% or whatever. Let's see actually how my, I mean, I have two different, I have 406 and the further out of the money. I don't think we're going to actually hit 408 today. If we do, I'll be a very happy camper. So these spy calls are trading for 137. I bought them for 46. So nice little 200% increase uh, on those. All right, Steve saying he didn't get links. I emailed them to him, so I'm gonna email them again. Uh, what are you guys trading out there in the chat? Let me know some tickers, some stocks you guys are looking at. And we're going to have Steve Kalasian, uh hop on in a few minutes here, give us his market outlook. And then again at uh, noon, here in about 20, 19 minutes, we will be talking to, uh, to Christian Angermeyer, who runs a fund, who just bought more than a million dollars of a of a company of a very exciting company i'm gonna tease you guys i'm not gonna tell you what company it is but he just he just bought more than a million dollars of, of shares of the company and i don't know it's cool to be able to talk to someone who's throwing around that much money and and, and talk about exactly why uh they're buying it fdx fedex someone's saying they're trading i mean look fedex whoa i didn't even know god fedex has been on, a, on an absolute tear since september 22 this huge drop that's when like this honestly, this this big move on on FedEx when it dropped from 200 to like 160, that's like the most that I was actually worried about the the overall economy because FedEx can kind of be seen as a as a barometer for the rest of the economy. Because I mean, if you just think about it, right? If FedEx is is blowing out the numbers and shipping a lot of goods to people, that should mean that okay, people are are, are buying things. But uh, FedEx has just been on an absolute tear from 144 to 226 in in less than a year here so uh fedex i mean strong company it doesn't look that expensive i mean it's a 20 pe uh and it, and it pays a dividend so i i don't know i mean i think i own some fedex in my 
in, in, in my Roth, but you know, it's not to me like one of the most exciting companies out there, but I mean, look, strength is strength and this thing's been strong. I mean, it, it, it took a big dip here down uh, to, to 195 and it's back to, to 225 now. So a nice little 30, 30 buck run right there. Um, all right, I see I see my man, Steve K, Steve Collision hanging out backstage. So it's been a couple of weeks since we've, we've, we've had the pleasure of talking to Steve. So without further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and welcome Mr. Steve Collasian on this episode of Benzinga Live. Let's go ahead and give Steve our very special intro when we come back. Um, I'll be, uh, I'll, I'll pull up my Benzinga Pro to, to look at some, some charts and some stuff. <laughs> Mr. Collasian, how you doing today? My man. Aaron, it's been a couple of weeks. How are you? I've been good, man. As you can see here, it's kind of a dark and gloomy day in Detroit, but it's Friday, so at least we've got that going for us. It's five o'clock somewhere, baby. That's it. It's, uh, yes, it's Friday. <laughs> yes, sir. It, it's it's always five o'clock somewhere. Well, uh, Steve, what is what have you been trading the past couple of weeks? What have, what what's your market outlook right now? Yeah, so I, I think the market's showing a lot of resiliency here. We're nowhere near out of the woods. I mean, you had three banks fail. You have, you know, the um, uh, just a lot of uncertainty with uh, the CPI. You, Kashari came out yesterday, said to be uh, in, inconscionable to raise the inflation target from 2 to 3%. I think the Fed right now... Um, is, I think the market's rallying for two reasons. One, the hope that the, they're not going to keep raising, and two, short covering. Um, but um, I think that for the month of April, we'll be within a 100-handle range. And I think uh, come beginning of the, well, we're into the second quarter as of tonight. But um, um, as of tomorrow, we'll, uh, I think starting early May, mid-May, I think um, we're going to, I don't. I think the. I think that again, my projection should be somewhat um, accurate. I do think that um, the Federal Reserve is still way behind the eight ball here when it comes to uh, rates, and I think that um, it's re relative to the overall markets and to have the understanding that um, I would not want to own stocks up here. Period. I think we're going a lot lower, um, and um, I think that for me the most important thing is to trade what you see, not have an opinion on anything, as I teach all my students, but to understand that these patterns that we're seeing today are monstrous. Whether you're trading gold, whether you're trading oil, whether you're trading gold, uh, you know S and P's indexes, uh, the mark or individual names here. I mean, names are moving like Microsoft last couple this week was trading in the mid 270s, 285 now. So there are a lot of opportunities up and or down. And I think that um, understanding uh, predictive analytics is that you get some significant intraday moves and intermediate term moves as well. So this is what we teach here each and every day. Uh, overall market, I think the higher they go, the harder they're going to fall. Got it. So, I mean... You're basically still in the camp that, you know, with, with interest rates set to to move higher, that you think the market's still got another big uh, downturn coming. I, I think that um, I think that I think what you're seeing here, OK, is the fact that you're still at six percent. Uh, I think he's still very hawkish. I think the Federal Reserve lost complete, complete credibility here. Um, and I think he has to save face. Uh, I'm talking Jerome Powell, Fed chairman. So I think what you're going to see here is that I think rates are going higher. You can see it in the, I, I have a, a bunch of people trying to sell their homes. Nobody's buying homes. The economy is going to, Kathy Woods, that the, I'm not a fan of her or anything like that. I'm just speaking what I read. She's looking for a hard recession come the, uh, the second, the third or fourth quarter of this year. I tend to, I don't agree with people, but I tend to agree with her. Um, and, you know, for me, I think that this is, this is, you know, when you're, you have a lot of people overly bearish and 
you got to have short covering rallies. And, and I think that's what you're seeing. We rallied last week from the 39.80 all the way up to 41, 41.15. And again, I think the market is making lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. Yeah, I mean, you have, uh, you, you have, you know, we've had this kind of not really bullish run in the market, but I think the market's held up a lot better than a lot of people have anticipated. Um, and just looking at, let's go to the spy here on a, on a daily chart. I was joking because like, I was like, are we just going to trade around 400 on the spy forever or 4,000 on the S&P 500? Like we'll get a little below it. A little above it, you know, whatever. It's just trade around it goes below it, and they push it right back above it. It's like they can't stand it that it's not below four thousand. You know, it's just like you know, like, um, I, you know. But I mean, uh, so so so. But my point is, is that like even with this, where, where we haven't had this big, you know, move down to thirty five hundred or whatever that a lot of people were calling for. People are still bearish out there, right? If I pull up the uh, the AAII sentiment survey, which is individual investors, um, and let me get that on the screen here real quick. So this is from the week ending in, in 329. So just this past week, 22%, uh, 22.5% said they were bullish versus 45% that said they were bearish. So there's still double the amount of bears there are out there than bulls. And like you said, when you have that, and then the market doesn't move down, you start having like short covering rallies. And we're not, you know, when we're talking about short squeezes, you're typically talking about highly shorted individual names like Tesla, GameStop, et cetera. But it's almost as if we're seeing those kind of like short squeezes on the overall market. You see, uh, Aaron, what you, what you brought up here is very interesting and everything like that. However, all that, that to me is a two to one, right? I like to see the bearish sediment get into the 55, 60 range before you see a bottom. That's not, that's not, I like, I like aberrations. I like extremes. You know what I'm saying? And that's not an extreme for me right now. Yeah, I hear you. And I mean, I, I think with a lot of times the sentiment follows price. So if we do see spy break 4,000 and go back down to 380 or whatever, like you'll probably see that, that number tick higher up into the 50s because people will be like oh sh oh shit stuff things are bad out there i gotta sell 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 and they'll get more bearish as the market moves lower so maybe it's the yeah. fact that you know spies held up that uh the, the the fact that people haven't gotten more bearish than they are right now i just think that uh, there's nothing for me here if the if you just take the notion that the federal reserve cpi is still six percent and they're they not raising their core of 2%, it's still 4%. And I think they're going to wait to see the next data around here. However, that's still a staggering amount and 4% gap. I mean, yes, we were at an significant peak at nine. They dropped three, which you knew they were going to go down from nine, right? Um, but I still think that the PE ratios are high. Um, people are cramming into safe uh, technology stocks for safety it used to be the other way around. They used to run into like defensive stocks like Procter and Gamble and names like that. Um, but I think again, as a viewer here, I would be li liquidating any longs. I would wait to position for a significant aberration on the way down. And I think then at that point, if they come into the numbers, I think they're going to see sometime the second or third quarter of this year. Um, and I think that that would be a unique time to start buying some. Uh, I'm not a fan of buying individual names. I like the underlying ETFs like the SPXLs, the Spiders, the Qs, names the Russell, the TNAs, names like that, the Diamonds, the S, the the, uh, the, um, the Diamonds and uh, the Dow, the DOW. Uh, not Dow stock, the um, when the in the cheaper one on the Dow. But you know, for me, I think the most important thing here is, you know, the markets are giving you the last four days have been like really super slow. I haven't seen it this slow. The week before, you were moving twenty points up and down on the S and P like a yo yo, and this week it's been very quiet. Um, a lot of times, a lot of people you see the market very 
questions. Like yesterday, we had, we had two or three speakers, and then Janet Yellen was speaking at 345. I think a lot of people are being very prudent. But they don't want to get in front of when a Fed speaker speaks to get involved in the markets, too. So I guess I'm a proponent of uh, the market should trade freely, and everybody should talk before and after the close. Yeah, and I mean, I think like, but you you mentioned earlier the 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 banks collapsing and whatnot. But I mean, isn't that also? Couldn't you also look at that as like, uh, you, you know, maybe the Fed's gonna have to be closer to having to to cut than they were originally planned on? Um, no, because you know, I think that uh, they're gonna jack up the. There was an article two days ago, I think Wednesday. That they're asking the banks to chip in 23 billion into the FDIC. Um, but if the banks fail, you, you got like five trillion dollars you gotta, you know, come up with overnight here. Um, and where are you gonna get that money from? Um, so right now there's a there's a, uh, a deficit in the FDIC of 23 billion, and the Federal Reserve asks the banks for higher fees to pay into it. So that's going to have a negative impact on earnings on from the bank stocks. So, um, but overall, I think the system is just kicking the can down the road here. And, uh, you know, uh, again, if you look at a overall political, I mean, a whole overall, not political, overall, I mean, you're $33 trillion in debt here. And, you, you know, you, you're, you're, you're printing money you don't have. It's all digital. And, you know, for the sake of the country, there's not a balanced budget. And you think, but you, you basically as a trader, you can't go into thinking like that. You have to trade what you see. If that's the case, you'll just get run over, you know. But eventually, I think that there's something's going to kick in here that's going to cause the market to drop very sharply. And I think that would be a very unique buying opportunity. Got it. So you're waiting for that kind of capitulation point yes. to where people are are forced to sell instead of just kind of, you know, leisurely selling and, and kind of orderly, you know, making some sales here and there. Yeah, I would not. Like I said, I wouldn't I would not add new money here. I think it's a big mistake. I'd be liquidating. Um, I mean, you know, you're 600 points, 700 points from the all time high. Um, but you're also 600 points off the low, right? So you're right in the middle here. The low on the S&P is 3501. We're over 4110 here right now. So, um, but again, I, I just think that for the viewers here who are going to trade intraday, that's great. That's what we do here, whether it's index futures, commodity futures, stocks, equities, Bitcoin, whatever. Let me get the currencies. But overall, in the end, I think that, you know, if you're an intermediate or long-term investor, I think there's a lot of downside to come. Got it. Um, well, I mean, any like individual names you'd be watching here to the downside? I mean, is it in the banking sector? Is it, is it, or what, what are you looking at? To short or to buy? To short. Oh, I, I think the, like the Goldman's of the world. Um, I, I, I don't like the Morgan Stanley's of the world. Schwab got pounded yesterday. I think these stocks have exposure. Um, and um, I think also a lot of them, well, Morgan and uh, Goldman make a lot of their money on trading too. So, but um, I think the tech stocks are like almost a mini bubble here soon. Um, I would, I think, look at like stock like NVIDIA and, and, um, you know, Roku, I mean, is down 400 down, you know, trade of 60 square was up in the, you know, 190 range and it's under, under 70 here. Um, <coughs> a lot of these stock Coinbase got absolutely smashed. Um, so I think there's a lot of stocks here that have uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, as they push up, I would be looking to sell into the longs into that. And if you think the market's going lower, then there are great vehicles like the TZAs, the SQQQs, the SDOWs, and or the SDSs um, that give you protection on the downside. Uh, these are the ETFs um, for the reverse, if you can't short. Got it. Well, it does look like 
Uh, as we're talking, Steve, you've got the S&P 500 SPY index making its high of the day. It's above 407 right now, so we'll see if that keeps pushing uh, now up uh, more than eight tenths of a percent on the day. So well, I don't know. I mean, quarter too. You know, it's the end of the quarter today. Yeah, we'll see if maybe maybe some people start selling, start start taking some profits toward the end. Um, but Steve, all right, thanks for hopping on with us today. It sounds thanks, like thanks, you know Aaron. your 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 outlook hasn't changed much, uh, regardless of of price action over the past couple of weeks. So, uh, you, you know, I know where you stand. You'll be looking for that capitulation point, looking for that for selling event. Uh, I mean, but there's going to be intraday moves here. Like there's going to be like, for example, I think like I, I believe it or not, I got a bicycle on the daily charts on my work. And I think that if we, any get, we get a push down, I'll be, there's going to be some buying opportunities, and a lot of names for another push up. So I think you have a couple of weeks of back and forth here before I think we start heading lower. I'm not bearish. I'm, I'm bearish, but I think there's opportunities based on my work that, that might get a push down to the 40, 30 level. You buy them again for another push right back up. I think there's some good opportunities to get long, get short. And then eventually, I think when my indicators start to roll that I'm waiting for, then I think the party's over. We're not there yet. There you go. All right. Well, Steve, again, thanks for hopping on with us today. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up next week. Thanks, Aaron. Have a great weekend, everybody. And thanks, Aaron. Have a great weekend. Of course, you do the same. All right, guys, that was Mr. Steve Collision. Always good to get uh, Steve's thoughts on the market and where we're headed. Um, all right, so here in a, in a couple minutes, we should be joined uh, by, by my, my friend Christian Angermeyer. Again, he runs a fund, Aperion Investments. I think I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, and he recently made a big purchase into a, into a company that I also like and I'm a big fan of. So uh, we're going to go ahead and talk. Christian, whatever he hops in here again, should be should be any minute. Um, oh, sp speak of the devil. I say his name in there. He he pops up backstage. Um, all right, guys. Well, let, let's go ahead and get right into it. It's Friday after. It's officially Friday afternoon here. It is it is is noon right on the dot here, uh, Eastern U.S. time. So. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and bring, let's give Christian our very special Zinger Nation welcome. And when we come back, we'll be talking about his newest investment, why Christian invested more than a million dollars. Again, I've been teasing it all day. I don't know if you guys, you know, if you guys read my articles, you already know what, what company it is, but I haven't said the name because I want to keep it a surprise for you guys, do a little reveal here. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and give Christian our, our intro and we come back, we'll be talking uh, about his newest investment. All right, Christian Angermeyer, welcome to Benzinga Live. I believe your first appearance on the show. So before we get started, mm -hmm. I know, uh, you know, I know that uh, the... I don't know if, if new investments the, the right way to put it because it's not a new investment for you per se, but you did make a new investment into this company. An additional one. Like, An so, additional one. I mean, positive is that I am the founder of a type, uh, the company you're talking about. So I was there from the start. I put in over 40 million over various financing rounds myself. Um, so I own roughly 17.5%, um, like roughly 29 million shares before. And I just added... Uh, another 1.2 shares, uh, 2.1 million shares, uh, approximately. Okay, so yeah, and you put out this great blog post on LinkedIn, basically the 14 reasons why I am adding to my investment in a tie. So we'll go ahead and link to that as well as, uh, you know, the coverage we did um, of that investment and blog post. Uh, I'll, I'll throw that link in the chat. But basically, for, for, for those in the audience who might not be familiar with the tie, give us the lowdown. Give us the basically elevator pitch on what the company is, what the company is yeah. and, and what the company is uh, trying to accomplish. Yeah, elevator pitch. It's Nastic listed. It's a mental health biotech company. So we're doing drug development for uh, various mental health issues like depression, anxiety, addiction, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, so we're hopefully a bit famous for being the psychedelics company. So we have most psychedelic substances which make medically sense uh, from psilocybin, the active ingredient in uh, so-called magic mushrooms, which we have via our stake in uh, another biotech company, which we sort of span out Compass Pathways. 
to DMT, ibogaine, uh, all of that. Yeah, why? Because these psychedelic substances have the strong potential, I have to say still potential because we're in the approval process, but we're actually with several of them pretty advanced, like clinical, like phase one, two, three, even with psilocybin. So those substances have the potential to really cure mental health issues or at least make them severely less uh, worse. So, so I think this, if you look at the macro picture, mental health is the biggest problem of the healthcare system by far. It's the number one disease, more than 1 billion people uh, suffer from it. And in my blog post, I'm actually explaining why it's actually way more because I could go on for that. Like it's still a stigmatized disease, whatever. But even if it's just 1 billion people, it's the number one disease and we hold uh, the potential solution for it. And then additionally, we even have some non-psychedelic um, uh, medical drugs focused on uh, again, the same issues. Like, so it's a broad uh, mental health play. Biotech is in a shitty place. I can't say it's somewhat differently. The whole sector actually suffered a lot, uh, mainly because, like, simplified said, when interest rates go up, obviously all the DCF models with their discounted cash flow, like cash flows which are out in the future, the longer you discount, the more interest rates sort of have an impact. However, so while I see the point that sort of biotech as a whole, like early stage biotechs should have corrected, like a tie is a late stage biotech. We're not so far away from drug approval and drug approval brings cash flows. But to make the point, like, so while biotech as a sector suffered, a tie suffered more, yeah, so that we have the absurd situation, we're trading actually below cash. So if you take what we have net cash, yeah, plus then we have the stake in compass pathways, which we span out, yeah, that together is round about two 0.14 US dollar per share. And we're trading today now, we're up a bit, but like we're still trading with a significant discount to cash. Yeah, cash and plus compass. And then we have seven more late stage, again, not early stage drugs, yeah, which you practically get for free. And that doesn't make any sense. Like markets can be really, really bad. It doesn't make sense. But again, this is the opportunities as well. And this is why uh, I'm adding. Got it. I mean, so so basically what you're saying is that it, it, it might make sense why a lot of biotech names have gotten beaten down that are so far away from bringing a drug to the market. But you're basically saying it doesn't necessarily make sense to you with a tie because a tie has drugs, therapies that are in, you know, phase two, phase three in the pipeline getting pretty close here. Yes. Yeah, so I say this is one point. Then. It also would make more sense if we were a single drug company, like we, if we had one drug and it's like, okay, we either make it or break it, but like- we Kind of a binary, a binary, like if you get well, that FDA approval or not. Exactly, but we're far away from that A because we have seven late stage. Again, and by the way, what I'm not even talking about is that we have a ton of early stage drug development we're doing as well, which some other companies get a completely independent valuation on. I'm not even talking about that. I'm focusing on, we have seven late stage drugs. Yeah, so it's the opposite of binary. And then even more, as some of you might know, and this is what I'm really, really passionate about, is psychedelics have these enormous anecdotal evidence, meaning we know either because some of them, by the way, psilocybin, had, was an approved drug in Europe in the 50s and 60s, and some other psychedelics were used in, let's call it shamanistic, like rituals, like for thousands of years. So it's different than a very new cancer drug where nobody knows, oh, is this working out or not? We do know this stuff works anecdotally, and we are out and about to prove it once and for all, like really scientifically in an FDA framework. But what I want to say, A, we're diversified, not a one-trick pony. B, yeah, we sort of have a strong indication these drugs work. Yeah, so this is like double reduce the risk. Yeah, again, plus you get anything, everything for free with a discount to cash. Yeah, plus it's the biggest sort of opportunity, if you want to say it. Unfortunately, I wish it were different, but like, unfortunately, sort of, as I said, mental health uh, problems are the biggest problem of our healthcare system and of our fellow humans. So, but for a biotech company, that means, yeah, it's the biggest opportunity because the market is so big. Got it. And I mean, I... I... I, I hear what you're saying, because especially like I've I've covered a lot in the psychedelic space, primarily because I'm I'm very interested in it. I have like, you know, like anyone else, you know, either 
people say, okay, here in America, people say, or like the, the messaging is that one in five people has a mental health thing. But I think that's a silly way to to like message that because it's really five and five people. Because whether or not you're like diagnosed with depression or anxiety or one of these things, you know what those feelings are like. You experience them on some level. And so when people say, oh, one in five people have a mental health disorder, that's basically saying like, oh, the f other four and five people are fine. They don't have any sort of mental. And it's like, okay, that's not true because like myself, I'm not you know, diagnosed with the depression or anxiety or anything. I don't take anything for it. But like, I know what it's like to feel depressed. I know what it's like to feel anxious. And so to, so to me, it's basically like five in five people, 100% of people have brains. So they have mental health. And the, the mental health that we have in America, at least, like the, the, it's, they're basically the same SSRIs and stuff they've been prescribing for, or for depression for the past like 25, 30 years. And they've basically been proven to like not work. Like there are clinical studies that have proven with control groups that like half of the group, you know, is, is taking like a placebo or whatever. Like they're the same, like that, you know, whether you're taking them or not, or if you work out, they like have the same benefits as taking SSR. So I'm a big proponent of this space. One of my favorite uh, kind of clinical studies that we've seen, which I'm sorry because I don't know if this was from an from an entire therapy or someone else, but basically they had like 90 uh, PTSD patients and they were doing therapy with MDMA. And by the end of the study, the majority of the patients didn't even meet the clinical definition of having PTSD anymore. So it's like you're you're starting to see this evidence not only in anecdotal. Uh, stories like you said, but in clinical trials that this stuff does work. So I think it's just a matter of time before the public starts to be more accepting of this and say like, okay, the stuff we have isn't working well. There's obviously this mental health crisis going on. We may as well give this, you know, give these psychedelics a try because I think it just sounds really out there for a lot of people. But people my age and younger people, I think, realize like, okay, a lot of these pills and stuff that that they're prescribing aren't that good for people in general. By the way, Winnie, you perfect, I couldn't add more. Like everything you said, actually, I, I, I published another blog post a while ago. So whoever goes on my LinkedIn and is reading the current blog post, yeah, there is the other one which I published. It's called Why Practically the Total Addressable Market for Mental Health uh, Solutions is 100% because we all have issues. And by the way, and it's great that people, especially the younger generation, starts being open with it and not hiding it. Yeah, uh, but you're gonna see like with more openness, which is great. Like the numbers, the official numbers will also rise. Yeah, and uh, and then no, you said it. Like we know kind of they work. Like also all the studies that Thai and Compass are doing, like they they very very like coming to these sort of legit uh, outcome. And I think what is weirdly or cynically seems to be still a worry, especially if some institutional investors I'm talking to. They are like, it's almost too good because you may be curing people. Yeah. And some people like the, oh, I give people a pill every day and they're going to be sort of hooked on it. Yeah. So first of all, I'm as an entrepreneur, I'm way more happy if I really find a cure for something than make people sort of dependent on my drugs. But as an entrepreneur, I also know if I do something great, if I deliver a great product, then it will be priced and valued accordingly. And because unfortunately the market is so big, yeah, sort of even, and I pray for it, that we really cure people once with one trip, yeah. But even if that's the case, we still with our drug portfolio will make a ton of money because the market is so big. And then some people might need it again after some years. So I'm not, that is one of the critiques I'm always saying, it's almost too good, like yet, yeah, because like you don't, Make people hooked on it and no it's great people will pay enough and insurers because like we're gonna bring so much relief to individual people and to the healthcare system so yeah but that seems to be one worry still with people but uh i'm not worried at all yeah. that's kind of the that's kind of the nasty side of capitalism right is that that people are like oh my god this is it, it's too good of a drug we don't want to invest because then all of a sudden you're carrying people and there's not money to be made there it's like the what are we doing how is this so big. yeah yeah, I mean, I, I, I've seen that before from uh, there's a I think it was Goldman or so, I don't want to say who, what bank it was because I don't want to like, you know, say it wrong. And it was a different bank. But someone basically said something about some cancer drug saying like we don't see this as a viable business 
because it's it, it's curating people instead of you know like j just being able to prescribe something to someone that they have to take for the rest of their life and it's like so stupid i mean that's not how yeah. that's not to me right i think capitalism works in a lot of of good ways but in terms of healthcare in terms of curing people it shouldn't be viewed as how can we make the most uh, how can we make the most dollars off this person how can we make the most money as we can off this person so if 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 the innovation is almost lacking instead of being driven by capitalism then that's something that should be looked at f from like a, a systemic level and i think here in america is probably a little bit worse than in other parts of the world where healthcare maybe isn't run as such a poor for profit industry no but even if it's for profit i want to make sure like we are a for profit company but like unfortunately the market is so big again 1 billion people waiting for a solution we're going to make a tremendous business even if, and I hope so, we will do. Yeah, we bring a solution even with sort of one uh, one therapy. Yeah, uh, so I'm not worried at all. And it, people will come around. It's the the other one is like what you said. Like there is this generational shift in, and I see it. Like meaning there is a Netflix documentary uh, practically about the work we're doing. It's called How to Change Your Mind from uh, based on the book from the amazing Michael Pollan, which shows how these uh, compounds work. So whoever wants to learn more, read the book How to Change Your Mind or uh, go on uh, or watch the Netflix series. So people will, because at the moment also, I also uh, pointed that out in my blog post, at the moment, analysts are still saying, oh, this is sort of the last resort. Like, let's try SSRIs first. This is what will happen. Like, and then this, and then this, and if nothing else works, then let's try psychedelics. I'm very sure because people are so open for it and it's such a much better potential solution that psychedelics will very quickly become the first line treatment and will gain a way bigger market share in the mental health sort of treatment landscape than people can imagine right now. So with that, I, I personally, I can always summarize it like there is the investment opportunity because we're trading or a tie is trading at these crazily low, again, even discount to cash. Yeah. Uh, but then there's also like the, the human opportunity. So I started several companies. We invest a lot in my family office, but like this is by far the biggest passion project I've ever done because I think psychedelics plus also the other drugs we develop, but especially psychedelics can add so much really for humanity. I don't want to make it too big and too lofty, but like it is really a valuable sort of um, group of compounds and yeah, uh, which will add a tremendous value to society. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's, you know, most, I think really great businesses are based upon this belief that what they're doing truly has the impact or the potential to like impact the world. And like you said, I mean, mental health is, if you look across the world, something that, you know, is, is such a, it's almost silly talking about like the total addressable market or the market opportunity. Cause it's, it's, it's like I said, it's like the way I see it, five out of five people have a brain and, and have mental health. So it's really every single person out there could probably benefit from having some better, you know, mental health habits or having at least more resources available. So it's like, again, if you're someone that has, or someone in your family, or you know someone that has like treatment resistant depression and they've tried SSRIs, they've tried this, they've tried that. And right now there's like nothing on the market that they can take that's derived from like a naturally occurring psychedelic substance that's that's silly to me there should be those things available and i think we're starting to see those shifts happening and i think um you know it's 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 almost unfortunate the way i see it for a company like a tie that no matter what uh they're doing in terms of of you know clinical trials and whatnot kind of still dependent on the overall regulatory process and dependent on the you know public kind of being more approving or more accepting of these types of therapies which again i just think but with, with, with how i look at you know and when, when i talk to people my age and stuff like it's it's coming whether some people like it or not whether big pharma likes it or not right it's coming because more and more people are like yeah this is better uh than than you know what's available now yeah no 100 percent agree Yep. All right. Well, Christian, anything else you want to add? I mean, I, I, well, what I'm curious about too, because I didn't really get to ask you. So I understand that you're a founder of a tie. Um, I've had the pleasure of speaking to Florian and what and, and whatnot before too. But what did you? So now you run your own fund, right? Is it a, a period? Am I saying that right? Yeah. So it's my family office. So I started very early. 
actually with a biotech company. Uh, I started a, a German biotech company with two of my professors when it was 10 to 19, uh, which we then actually merged into a SPAC, uh, funnily. Um, and the company is now called Alnylam, and they acquired more businesses after. But like this was one of their core acquisitions, which is a, I don't know what the latest market cap is, but like $25 billion or whatever market cap. Uh, and this was sort of the start into my entrepreneurial li uh, life. So I'm running my own family office at Pyron uh, Investment Group, where we invest in simplified set tech and biotech. Um, but once in a while, and the Thai is sort of the perfect example, once in a while I encounter opportunities which I can't invest in because nobody has done it before. So when I sort of encountered psychedelics myself in 2013, this was really 14, my immediate hunch was like, oh my God, this is like needs to become medically used again. So there must be companies, there must be biotech companies working on it, but then they weren't. And then I start companies myself. So rarely, so, but just when I see these massive uh, opportunity, but because I'm also running uh, my own investment firm, a Pyron, sort of, I always team up with great people to sort of do it together. So I'm the chairman of a tie. Yeah, Florian um, is a, um, a great operator with whom I had worked before as well in other companies. So Florian is my co-founder and the CEO. We have Srinivas Rao, who's an amazing scientist in neuroscience, um, who uh, is our also co-founder and chief scientific officer. And then we build up a team of, in the meantime, 90 uh, people around it. So uh, we're super well equipped, both capital-wise with the cash we have, plus we have access to uh, more than 150 million credit lines. So we really financed through till 2026 and can even potentially by other companies, uh, sort of take on more uh, trucks with our strong uh, balance sheet. Yeah, but we also brain-wise, so to say, equipped. So I think we have one of the best teams uh, in uh, in CNS truck development. Well, there you go. Well, Christian, thank you for for hopping on the show today. It's been a great discussion. I always thank love. You, uh, I always love talking to people in the in, in the, that are working in the mental health space, especially on the psychedelic side. Of course, we do have our our Benzinga psychedelics uh conference and cannabis conference coming up in a couple weeks in miami so if anyone out there is interested in that uh, i'll drop a link in the chat for more info on that but christian uh great to great to have you on today i hope we get to talk again soon cool hopefully soon thank you having all right me. bye, yeah, bye enjoy your enjoy your travels <laughs> thank you bye 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 uh all right guys that was christian angermeyer founder of a Thai life sciences ticker a t a i uh, here's the part where I'll disclose that I am a, a, a small shareholder, not as big of a shareholder as Christian, obviously. He just added more than a million dollars worth of shares to his already. I think he has more. I think it is fun. He has more than 30 million dollars or 30 million shares of a tie right now, which is probably valued at something like 50 million dollars. Um, so, hey, he's bullish, bullish on 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 the future of of psychedelic therapies, being able to treat uh, mental health. And I mean, at the end of the day, like. I've, I've talked about this on the show before. It's it's possible sometimes to be too early on an investment, right? Like there's the, it's kind of like a joke type thing, but it's like, if you would have bought a, a, a thousand bucks in Apple in 1980, you would have sold it for 200 bucks when it went down 80% before 1995 or whatever. Like even Apple, you could have been down 80% on it for like a period of time there in the 80s to 90s. And it's it's you would have been like, oh, man, like I was real wrong about this company. And then you realize like, oh, shoot, you look 20 years down the road. No, you weren't wrong. You were just a little early. Um, and I think a lot of people like especially with the way the markets were behaving in 2020 and 2021 uh, bought into these like high growth ideas and not just in psychedelics, but in different. You know, if you look at different, you know, Kathy Wood esque areas where people were really you know, buying into the long-term future and buying these stocks at, at at pretty high premiums. And the next thing you know, like inflation gets a little out of control, Fed starts raising interest rates, and all of a sudden Wall Street's like, hey, we don't like these companies that don't make any money. Like, why would we why would we want to invest in these companies that don't make any money when we can invest in these companies that are making money? Um, so I, I think like that's like really the biggest risk here with investing in some of these psychedelic companies is that it just still takes a while from this point. Uh, to when the not just when the drugs hit the market, but really when like mass adoption happens. Um, but like Christian said, I mean, a tie not only has the diversified pipeline, 
but they're deep in the pipeline, right? They're in phase two, they're in phase three. And actually what's interesting about looking at some of these investments from the psychedelic side is that they're all kind of going through that FDA uh, process to becoming like approved medicines. Whereas if you buy some of the cannabis companies, cannabis is still federally legal. Like so is psilocybin, but not when the, the drug goes through the pipeline and the FDA, all of a sudden, boom, you have that regulation. You're legal now. Uh, Kevin O'Leary actually talked about this at our cannabis and psychedelics conference last year about why he was an investor in companies like MindMed and other ones in the psychedelic space, but couldn't, as an institutional investor, even touch some of these uh, you know, other uh, uh, cannabis companies where, again, it's still federally illegal. Um, all right, y'all. I see uh, my man Stephen Hode hanging out backstage. So whenever Stephen's ready to hop on uh, and give us his thoughts, we'll we'll go ahead and bring on Stephen just for a few minutes here because I know it's it's late Friday afternoon for him, and and we're we're ticking along on this Friday. I mean, let's let's check in on uh, on Spy. Ooh, okay. Spy. Wow. New highs of the day. Four four oh seven. 40 i've still got my spy calls i sold most of them but um i've held on to enough to still be rooting for it here i mean if we hit 408 uh if we hit 408 here on the s p 500 then it will be a good good day for me let's do a quick check on the old port before we bring um before we bring steven on i mean this has just been my little fun yolo options account boom as you can see here so these 406 calls that i had bought them at 46 cents they are now trading at a buck 78 or if you like percentage gains total return of 295 percent not too bad 295 percent i think most uh you know fund managers or whatnot will take that uh, in a year, let alone, uh, I, I they take that over a decade, probably right. 28% annualized over 20, 10 years, but I did it in a day. I did it in 24 hours. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. I'm not going to show you my other investments, but this one, Oh, I'm not even sharing my screen right now. You guys can't even see this. All right, look, I'll show you. I'm not, I'm not lying to you. 46 cents was my average cost date purchase yesterday. Uh, they're now up. Whoa, even more now, 304%. Uh, let's look at that spy call. I mean, we're just ripping on the spy. 407.54 now. All right. That's enough about my spy calls. But without further ado, let's go ahead and give Steve our very special Zinger Nation welcome when we come back. We'll be uh, we'll be talking some charts with my man, the Stop Hunter. <laughs> Mr. Stephen Hode, how's it going? Afternoon. I'm very well, thank you. Not so bad. You're in the wrong job. Well, I should be trading, you're saying, professor? Yeah, no sort of numbers. Yeah. I mean, hey, what, uh, a, a blind nut, a blind squirrel gets a nut once a day still, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Twice a day. Um, all right. Well, Steve, do you have charts you want to pop up? What have you been watching? Yeah, let me share the screen. I like talking about this this stuff. I mean, I don't know. I like, you know, it's it's fun to be able to trade and and do the news side of things too. But uh I mean, Steve, if you've if you've if you've got someone and you, you know, want to throw you want to throw you want to fund me and you want to see how I do, I'm not going to turn down <laughs> the opportunity. I'm not thinking about that one. Okay. <laughs> anyway, what um, have we got? Oh, well, I was looking at your spy chart as you were speaking just there. And you were saying 408 to get out. So yeah, four oh eight and a half looks good to me. So I'm not going to advise you this week though, because I saw saw the fallout from the other week when you put me on the spot. So yeah, it looks good. No, still, I think I think you guided me well last time. I don't know. I mean, I'm always down to take some profit. I actually did already take some profits, and 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 I think I had something like I don't know, fifteen spy call like actual contracts going into the day. And earlier I sold about half of them. So I'm still holding seven contracts. The way I see it is I let these run. Worst case that happens, they go down a little bit. I'll get stopped out. And then uh, you know, I'll still have made money on the day. 
exactly you were richer than when you started so yep that's that's that that's the key um yep, exactly. so all right so, so charts so yeah. charts we've got yeah. spy no, we've got... running today what else are we looking at yeah so um quick one on the currencies um you know it's my mad um chart us dollar just weakening off the pound getting a bit stronger so it's a nice trade to the long side there gbp usd the safe haven currencies that peaked during the banking wobbles um the swiss franc japanese yen sort of giving back some of that strength at the moment um so nothing too exciting there like i said gbp usd probably the pick of the bunch of those majors there at the moment um stocks great start to the day um over there in the us s p looking very green um in terms of performers now nasdaq 100 this is my global look at every market every major market in the on the planet and the s p up you know nearly nine uh, sorry NAS, nasdaq up nearly 19 percent this year but the big surprise for me and i don't want to get too political on this is number two that's the moex 10 that is the russian stock market so despite everything going on over there, you know, their stock market has still been performing. So I had a quick look at their chart and it's the top 10 Russian companies. So they're, you're talking energy, finance, that sort of thing, up 43 percent from October of last year. So that's that was my shock chart of the week, though. I couldn't believe that, you know, it, it had done so well. Um, but Nasdaq. Yeah, I remember. I remember on the on the when, when that when the whole war invasion, you know, started. You had a lot of people that kind of were were buying the the ruble down there. Like, what the ruble actually made an incredible recovery within like six months or something of the of that uh, fallout. So I wonder, you know, like I, I don't know if these guys are just like willing to take on yeah, all that risk go. or. Or what? Yeah, I mean, just an incredible recovery. Actually, it was actually trading higher than it was like before the yeah, invasion, and I was exactly. I was I was shocked by that. Uh, and I don't really dip into the currencies all that often, uh, Stephen, because you can see by by the things I trade, like I like the volatility, I like the the yeah. the ability to make you know uh, a three hundred percent gain overnight. That's fun to <laughs> yeah. me. Uh, yeah. And so when people are like trading forexes to try to get you know a, a quarter of a percent here and there, whatever. But this got me kind of interesting because I was like, oh, that looks like something you know you could really make some some money off of. Yeah, no, the, well, the ruble is a very tricky one to trade. I wouldn't recommend it um, due to liquidity and the way it actually works. It's not not the easiest one to trade. But if you had you know you were a bit of a risk taker and a punter, then yeah, it's definitely one of those you call it emerging market currencies that are there to um certainly be played so that was that was my sort of shock of the week just seeing how the their stock market had actually bounced back quite considerably um in terms of u.s areas as you probably know that we've got my ones i dislike at the top some etfs um, cannabis and crypto and down the bottom it's all about tech and semiconductors still so still looking very strong there um and hopefully for for much longer and a quick look at um the bank stocks remember we looked a few weeks ago at european stocks i've uh, got credit suisse up there in the top right still complete mess even despite you know getting into bed with ubs um down 95 percent the others seem to you know the crisis seems to have been averted and you can start to see you know HSBC Barclays Do even Deutsche Bank that was struggling over the weekend. Well did you see what Party happened with Deutsche corner. Bank? Did you see what what the the reason behind that big drop last week was? What well, just uh, I didn't actually know you tell me. So okay so I don't know if you recall but I think it was like one day maybe last Thursday or Wednesday or something Deutsche Bank opened down like 15% here in the US or whatever. And people were all yep. worried. Oh my God, is this the next bank to fall or whatever? And yep. actually I got to give a shout out to, to Luke Jacoby who joins me on the show sometimes. Uh, he basically runs our, our company, Benzinga. And he's a really, really astute, smart guy. He's been probably more involved in, in like stock market news than anyone else over the past 10 years, like every single day. And he basically said to me, you know what I bet this is? Because there was no news out there about why Deutsche Bank would be down 14%. I said, mm -hmm. no, like, what do you think it is? 
He said, I bet it, it was someone running up the price of the uh, credit defaults overnight. Yeah. And we look, and, and then it came yesterday, Bloomberg put out an article that one trader basically bought a bunch of the credit defaults. So for people out there, there are these, and I, I don't know, Stephen, stop me if I'm not explaining it properly. Yeah. But essentially the, the bonds that you would get if a company defaults on their credit. So essentially it's insurance. Yeah, it's insurance that if like a yeah. company yeah. insurance, if a company goes under, you buy these uh, credit default swaps or whatever, and then they'll go up a bunch. So if you're a big investor, and in a company and you're worried about it going under, you can buy these to kind of hedge your position or some insurance. But basically someone with just like $20 million or whatever, like enough money to really make those credit default stops go higher, then people saw those credit, those uh, defaults moving higher and basically thinking, oh my God, is Deutsche Bank in a lot of trouble here, which then caused investors to start selling, mm -hmm. which caused those credit defaults to go up even higher. So it was a guy who basically like, I got. I don't know. Like you might think, okay, that's some like market manipulation. Not yeah. really the the yeah. the the best thing to do. But it's kind of a, a, a was a smart move because he knew how much uh, you know uncertainty and fear was out there surrounding the banks already. That maybe in a normal situation wouldn't have caused that much panic. But because of everything that has been going on with Credit Suisse and whatnot, that little move higher in the credit default market was enough to make the stock go down like 15% the next day. Correct. Yeah. Now, Deutsche Bank has always, for as long as I remember, been always in a sort of bit of trouble. And that sort of, you know, red flag waving would have sparked that, you know, sort of interest. And Deutsche Bank are one of those ones to watch for, like you say, those ri rising CDS numbers, um, because they're always on the radar of that type of trader or that, you know, the, you know, if you're, sort of long puts or something like that on Deutsche Bank, then, you know, it's worth, you know, watching out for that. But they're always, like I said, they've always been a bit fragile compared to, say, some of the more traditional mainstream banks like your HSBC or BNP Paribas over here. Yeah, I mean, even uh, like Credit Suisse, I remember like a year, year and a half ago, like people talking about like, okay, the, you know, Credit Suisse is in a lot of trouble here or whatever. So it wasn't really that surprising that when all this banking stuff started going on, that like Credit Suisse was one of the ones that were most affected because I think that one and probably Deutsche Bank too for a while have yeah. have you know been under a lot of scrutiny to be of people being like, how good of a position are you guys actually in financially right now? Because I you know I don't know. I think a lot of people don't uh, you know know that for a lot of banks. Yeah. Now there's a, like like in America, saw a stat. Um, I think in 1920 there was 31,000 U.S. banks. Now it's down to about four or five thousand. So the pool of banks is getting smaller and smaller. You know, those bigger ones are getting bigger and bigger. And it's the same over in Europe when there were you know, tens of thousands of them. You know, there's you know a lot less in the pot. And when the run comes on them, that contagion effect can spread quite, quite quickly, especially the way they're managed underlying that. So, yeah, that was so the look on the. Yeah, cool. Sorry. I was just going to ask, like, overall, what, what's going on with. England's economy. I know, you know, there was a lot of concerns when the, uh, you know, however long it was ago, six months ago or whatever, when the 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 currency, the pound sterling, fell a bunch over the weekend going into the yeah. week, and then you guys had the, uh, you know, Liz Truss left. Obviously, you got the new prime minister coming in. Uh, what what what, what what's what's but. What's been the uh, well? That was that's going back years and years and years ago. No, we're, now, we're, we're still de we no, we're still dealing with that at the moment. So um, this only yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we signed a new trade um, deal with um, I think it was like Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, some Asian countries. There's a block, you know, a bit like the BRICS type stuff. Um, we signed a new trade deal with there. Really doesn't do anything to the economy. I think it said it had like a 0.8% impact on GDP or something like that. In terms of where it's going at the moment, I'd say it's in a bit of a mess. It do, I, I don't think it really knows where it's going and the leadership um, doesn't really have a plan. So, well, yeah, how's the new guy doing? What's his name? S Sayek? Sinek? Rishi, Rishi Sunak. Sunak. He's one How's of he because he's supposed to be like a big business guy, right? He's coming from the investing world. His his wife um, is massive in India. They own one of the biggest tech companies in India. 
um, and he himself must be worth, I thought, probably a billion dollars easily um, for all his business things. He's got hedge funds and all sorts of things going on behind the scene. So, you know, you would think he would have a bit of, you know, nous to um, sort stuff out, but I don't know politics over here and politicians aren't, aren't very um, favorited at the moment. Um, it's like a them and us situation. I think you've probably got a similar thing going on in the, the U S um, wh whichever way you turn over here in the UK, there's not a solution. Um, so, People are still going on about the cost of living crisis. Um, yes, prices are still going up. Um, we're not, you know, the industries that we were really strong at, finance, maybe weakening off a bit. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I'd paint it as a pretty neutral, not very exciting picture, really. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, Europe, especially with the kind of energy fears after the Russia-Ukraine war, you know, it's a lot were made about, uh, you know, like if, if England was going to be able to make it through the winter and all this stuff. And I always thought that was so overblown, like all those fears. And I think, you know, I, I mean, it seems like the position that the overall global economy is in. And then if you look at England's particularly or the U S is particularly like, I think if you would look at where we're at now and you told us that six months or eight months, whatever, all, all those big fears about the energy crisis, we've been like, Oh, okay. I'll take that. I'll take that where yeah. we, we we've held up. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Really? You know? Yeah. We've been pinched a bit on the prices, but actually we've got through it. You know, we got through the COVID thing, then we got through, you know, this energy crisis thing. Um, we just keep stumbling across new crises, which we seem to, you know, get our way through. Banking crisis a few weeks ago seems to have, the noise has petered out over here. You know, we seem to have doing all right, but it just doesn't seem a very exciting, future driven, you know, economy and plan that we've got in place at the moment. A bit more reactive at the moment, sort of. China, India, you know, that sort, those sort of countries more in focus, wondering what they're doing rather than maybe concentrating on what, you know, we should be doing and getting ahead. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a, a murky picture. So, got it. Well, do you have any um, other charts outside of the banks yeah, you want yeah, to I, flip to? I do. I've All got, right, let's do it. got a few more. Last few. Last stock, Meta. Uh, I don't know whether you talk about this on your um, show or not very often, but it's one that, confounds me and confuses me because i keep seeing all these stories you know he's getting rid of staff you know zuckerberg's not very well like the products you know maybe if he's copying people and whatever price came off massively but then we've seen this huge run up and it's coming towards this purple trend line and it you know breaks there and we could be moving back up to you know the 300 area so it's one that always confuses me because i'll you know, charts are telling me to buy it, but something underneath says, mm, hang on. So, yeah, that's my chart well, of the week. You know. So I think with Meta, what, what had and this is my kind of take on it is so on that big downturn that started kind of when 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 growth started getting out of favor. Right. I mean, the stock went from what was it? Three hundred and fifty dollars, three hundred. Yeah. Three eighty one. All then. the way down to, to what did it get down to? Like one. A hundred, basically. 89, so, yeah. At this point, right, when, when this whole thing was going down, you had Fed raising interest rates, growth just going out of favor. Uh, and meanwhile, with the company specifically, like Meta was investing all this money into the metaverse. They, uh, in one quarter, I remember specifically the first time ever the company lost uh, users on a quarter over quarter basis, like Facebook users dropped or Instagram users dropped for the first time. So you had all these things happen that were driving the price lower, but then it hit a point where like value investors started looking at it yeah. and saying, okay, yeah. wait, the stock is trading at, at X and they're bringing in Y amount of, of dollars each quarter. Like that doesn't make any sense. The cash flow of the business is still strong. So at a certain yeah. point, it, 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 it ceased to become a beaten down growth name and became a value stock, like an opportunity as a value play. Now, I yeah. don't know how true that is now that the stock's doubled and is back up above, yeah, you know, $200. Range, yeah. But, but I, that. 
I, I think there is still strength in the, I mean, you've been tracking the cues. You know there's strength that there's been strength in American tech yeah. stocks or global tech yeah. stocks in general, whether it's Microsoft, you know, Meta. And what I'll say right here about Meta on the on the bullish side is, I mean, out of the big major companies that are going to benefit from this, uh, you know, emergence of AI, it's hard to imagine that that Facebook and Meta wouldn't, you know, find some way to benefit to drive some revenue yeah. through this. I don't yeah. know what it looks like right now. Who knows? I'm not saying that Meta's like would be my favorite stock out of the FANG stocks to buy right now. I mean, I think Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, I think I would all prefer those over Meta. Yeah. But I think, I don't know. I could see it either way. You could tell me, Stephen, that you no, were short it or long it, and I'd say, okay, I understand. Yeah, that's that's. I think that's my problem as well. When I you know, I think about them, if, if I was going just on the rules of technical analysis, you have got this sort of reverse head and shoulders pattern building up, and if you play the rules of that game, then the price should be back up to around about three ten, three twenty. If that works out and it breaks through that that trend line, so. Yeah, it's an interesting one. So something I've been looking at and pondering over the last few weeks. So I've got a few commodity charts to sort of wrap up with. Um, yeah, let's do it. I've got gold here. Um, obviously, with the banking crisis, a few you know, fears of China and Russia, that sort of thing, what's going on in the, the east over there. Been helping gold up. It's, only, uh, it's been up 10% over the month hitting the two thousand dollar mark i think if it can break through those sort of heady points to 100 late 200 2000 you know 2000 sort of 80 area in terms of dollars could be a potential upside but gold's not very you know volatile in terms of price movement so it's a it's a hold and see type of point of view trade but it's still got some upside there um things calm down then you know, you've got 1900, 1850 back down to the downside. So that's look on gold. Oh, and I'll just put because often we talk about correlation trades and you were looking a few weeks ago for a correlation. Now I put down the bottom here correlation to the US dollar. You can see that's currently at minus 87 percent. So you can see that that has a strong you can see as the price rose in gold, how the price of um, the dollar fell so that there's that. There has been an inverse relationship there, you know, and that in terms of statistics, that's a very strong, strong inverse relationship. And Nat Gas, we talked about that a few weeks ago. Ah, oh, it's just been getting killed. Yeah. And reasons, huge inventories, no exciting weather patterns developing. You know, it's been normal over in the US and really not because of that, you know, and no sort of demand increase and it's just petered back out again you know it's just you know like we thought i said maximum upside was about three nine four didn't even get that far just gave up and it's gone back to where it was um you know a few months ago so yeah that's my my chart view of of this week for you yeah uh, well, I've, I've got one individual name that I would love to look, to look at a chart with, yeah. with you. Um, sure. That's Alibaba. Baba, of course, that we, ah, have, yes. we haven't spoken since they had the huge news about the company reorganization and whatnot. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's still beaten up, even with being up like 20% over the last week or so. You look at the chart here, like the daily chart, it's, it's. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't look like any real bullish pattern has like formed no. or, uh, well, you know. Got, I'm going to get my drawing pen out on here. You've got that as a big sort of roadblock around like 120 dollars. 120. Yeah, and you've also got if you go back as well, you've got it down there where it bounced up from. So to me, 120 is a a big headache for the to the upside. So you might get it up to here. But then you've got this is this nice channel, isn't it? Down to seventy four, seventy five dollars. So you could easily see it sort of banging like that. It's got a breakthrough there, and then maybe two hundred if it does get past that. At the moment, it's right. it's bearish in the longer term. It's still nothing. So I know they're going to split it. Was it six ways or something like that? 
And um, yeah, but that's probably down the road. So I want to let me. Yeah. So I'm going to put out like an alert. And if this thing passes 120, I think we could be off to the races. Because here's so here's my thesis on this, Stephen, is that yep. from a from a from a fundamental standpoint, the stock is way cheaper than it should be, right? Because yep. there are all these fears about china and what's going on with you know u.s and china relations what happens if china invades taiwan all of these things you throw those risks out the window and you just look at like what the book value of this company should be i think it should be like double the price of where it is right now Correct. Yep. um yep. I, like, so, I like trading this one it's it's one i trade quite a bit um have have done historically and i totally agree with you on those as so the, the other fear factor in there is um with these you know, it's an ADR, American Depository Receipt, um, you know, trades on the U.S. markets. And there was talk about, you know, taking Chinese stocks off the U.S. Um, exchange. So maybe there's a bit of investor worry in there that, you know, because you can't access the actual Alibaba stock over in you know Hong Kong, China, wherever, you know, do you want to play it? So I don't know whether there's a bit of fear factor going in. But, but like you say, there's great value here another stock you know the google of china of someone like baidu as well that you can trade quite happily over in the states i think it's good value there's some there's some good value chinese stocks yeah so i'm just saying let's just put a let's just put a note out there to watch this to where if we do get some more bullish action we cross that 120 maybe we you know we start looking at how we can trade that i don't know i mean i was Options. actually looking yeah i steven i was so upset with myself because i uh and I, I have like the, the history of it on my computer to show because someone was saying they didn't believe me. I was legitimately looking at I don't even I don't know if I would consider them leaps, but they were far dated Baba yep. calls, say like yep. you know, that expire in like August of this year, like five months down the road. The day before they announced that breakup and the stock was up 10% yeah. the next day, and I didn't buy them because it, it's it's just kind of a more volatile stock. And I think yep. so they were like a little bit more expensive than I thought they should be. They were like you know, say three bucks. And I was like, oh man, I was hoping they were two bucks. And yeah. next thing you know, those same contracts the next day were up a hundred percent. And I was like, oh, I should have just done it. Like, but hey, you, 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 you learn those lessons, I guess. But, but, you know, like you say, if, you know, they've got that value there, they could still go up, you know, a long way. So yeah, I think, you know, they, they I still think they're sort of relatively cheap, those sub cool positions. So, yeah. And I think with, I think with, uh, you know, a company like that, that I think it has, the, it, it, it's, it's almost like common knowledge on Wall Street that it's like, yeah, this thing's way undervalued, but you have all these risks and fears. So it makes sense. I think with yeah. stocks like that, as soon as you start getting more of those bullish, Nothing has to fundamentally change with like geopolitically, but just if the price starts going up, people are like, oh yeah, like I'm not too worried about that. Let's just buy the stock. It's going up. And then yeah. next thing you know, it's at 120, then 140, then 150, yeah. then 180. So I think very quickly, if we do, uh, you know, break that 120, get some more bullish activity, I think it could run pretty quickly actually. And we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. By do, by do chart here, similar type of, you know, um, look, think of these as the google of china i still think they've got good value you know up into this zone as well there you go up to 275 if they break up through here so another place so there's there's like you say good value out there in loads of different you know stocks but yeah we'll have a we'll have a game with the 120 200 level over the next you know a few months see where they they end up i will be All trading right, well, we'll, so. we'll be watching we'll be watching all right, Stephen. Well, thanks for hopping on, uh, as no always. And, and and let's see if you got any final final charts or thoughts. But we're getting ready to wrap up the show here in a few minutes, anyway. But I know it was kind of last minute this week, changing uh, days of yep. the show and whatnot. But it, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. No problem whatsoever. Good to be on. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll talk again soon. We are just a, a quick note to the audience. We're we're, we're talking to Stephen about getting a, a a nice little morning European show set up to where Stephen can do some uh, coverage of what's going on overnight before we get to our pre market prep in the morning. So uh, just look out in the next couple of weeks for an announcement and some movement there because that's something I'm really excited about. Yeah, it sounds good. Looking forward to it. All right, Stephen. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Thanks, and have a good weekend. All right, y'all, that was Stephen Hogue, the Stop Hunter. going to go ahead and drop uh, that YouTube channel in the chat if you guys want to get some more great content and videos from Mr. Hode.
Um, but alrighty, y'all. It is Friday at about 1 p.m. Eastern, which means it's time for us for us to wrap up. Uh, I believe we'll be back live later in the afternoon with swing swing training with Money Mitch. Um, but if I don't see y'all or hear from y'all until next week, hope you guys have a good weekend. As always, stay green. We'll be back. We'll be uh, we'll be we'll be back getting the action next week, Tuesday and Thursday at least. Maybe we might mix in some extra Benzinga lives next week because the following week. We'll be in Miami for the Benzinga Capital uh, Cannabis Capital Conference. You'll be able to see me on some streams and whatnot down there, but we won't be doing our normal shows. So uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content today. Peace and love, y'all. This.